Got to be a struggle after a while, though, didn't it? That's going to wrap it up. South Carolina wins it. Wisconsin, Arizona State coming up next as we send it to Dave Pash and Brian Greasy, guys. Welcoming those who just watched South Carolina beat Vanderbilt on ESPN. Arizona State converting on third down and six. And now the ball right at midfield. And Marion Grice between the tackles. It's about six to the 45 where Chris Boylan makes the tackle. That's Grice on the inside, a power runner. The combination of Grice and Foster will be a big key in this game. How well does Chris Boylan, obviously that's not his picture, but how well does Chris Boylan Get after those guys on the second level. Here's Rick Smith who dropped a wide open pass on first down, making the catch here, brought down by Darius Hillary, but it's a first down for Arizona State at the Wisconsin 40-yard line. The pace and space of Arizona State's offense. They want to get the ball to Grice. They want to get it to Foster on the perimeter and make Wisconsin defend 53 yards. Here's Grice trying to cut it back. They get stood up by Bo Allen, Wisconsin's best defensive lineman, according to the coaching staff. And they moved Allen to nose guard. This is a different scheme under Gary Anderson. They're going to play a 3-4 base defense rather than a 4-3, so three defensive linemen on the field. And Bo Allen is asked to do the tough job of nose guard and making the double teams. A two-yard pickup for Grice. Here's second and eight. And Kelly keeping. His pass is pulled in just short of the first down by D.J. Foster. He's a very good receiver out of the backfield. Third down and one coming up for Arizona State. There's Gary Anderson, four years as the head coach at Utah State. But the offense that you'll see from Anderson and the Badgers looks very similar to what Brett Bielema and even Barry Alvarez ran prior to Bielema's arrival. On third down and short, it's Grice. And looks like he's got the first down of the 28. How about Arizona State? Twice now between the tackles, getting good yardage. Well, make no mistake, this is not a finesse offense. Todd Graham, Mike Norva want to be physical. They want to give the ball to Grice inside the tackles. They want to have that element. They run the ball 68% of the time in this offense, so this is not your typical spread zone offense. And Kelly with all day to throw. Down to the 11-yard line, a first down. And that's Chris Coyle, their tight end. He's an X-Factor. He caught 57 balls a year ago. When Taylor Kelly wants to make a play, he wants to find Chris Coyle. And when you spread the defense so thin horizontally with Foster and with Rice, the middle opens up wide for Chris Coyle. He set a score record for catches by a tight end last year. There's movement by Arizona State, so penalty flags fly. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense number 54. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. And that's the right tackle, Tyler Salka. That's a rarity for Arizona State. Last year, they were the... They were 10th in the FBS in fewest penalties after being the most penalized team in 2011. They just had one penalty in week one. So first down and 15. And it's Grice trying to find a running lane. It's not there. He gets run down by Ethan Armstrong, former walk-on, so no gain on the play. And that's a big penalty there, especially in the red zone. I think penalties in the red zone are magnified because it's a short field, and Wisconsin, despite the fact they've been on their heels in this first drive, if they can get a stop here and force a field goal, I think they would judge that a win. Second year for Todd Graham. They won eight games last year, their first winning season since 2007. Here comes a reverse to Foster, and Wisconsin not full. Foster there hurdles Chris Borland and gets to the 10 yard line. So that's a five yard gain. It'll still be third down and long. They can get a first down before the end zone. Great reaction by Chris Borland. Everybody makes so much out of the lack of speed, if you will, on this Wisconsin defense. But Borland at 246 pounds ran sideline to sideline easily. So third down and nine for Arizona State at the 10 yard line. Here's a rollout for Kelly and the throw back to the tight end, Chris Coyle. Inside the five, and he'll be short of the first down. So fourth down and two. Do you take the points? Well, we were talking with uh, Coach Graham yesterday. He said anytime he crosses the 50-yard line in this game, that he will not kick. He will go for it. Well, 
you've got a field goal kicker that's a true freshman in Zane Gonzalez, who missed two out of his four attempts last week. And Todd Brown electing to go for it here. Fourth down and two. It's a pass play. Kelly fires, and it is incomplete. Nearly picked off by Desmond Southward. He had his foot on the sideline when he made the catch. I don't know. Southward, Southward may have got his, I don't think his feet went out of bounds. Let's take a look. The ball is tipped, thrown behind him. It was an easy touchdown. Here comes Southward, number 12. And I don't know. Look at that right there, guys. Yeah, and, and this is important That's because close. it's either the ball at the two, or if it is an interception, it's a touchback, and you start at your 20. The ruling on the field is incompletion. So the ruling on the field was that Kevin Ogier, the wide receiver for Arizona State, was out of bounds. Therefore, the play's over, but it didn't look like he was out of bounds when he got his hands on it. And then it was hard to First tell if Southward was out of bounds, but... Yeah, that's close. Clearly, Ogier was not out of bounds. The ruling on the field stands on the previous play. So the ruling on the field stands. Not enough video evidence, according to them, to overturn it. So Wisconsin, instead of having a touchback, has to start on its three-yard line. You might say, oh, it's just a 17-yard difference at the 20, but uh, this is where all the students, Arizona State student section down here, it's going to be loud. And Arizona State led the country in tackles for a loss last year. Can't get tackled for a loss in this situation. It'll be two points. Joel Stavi, the quarterback, and his pass deflected in the end zone. Incomplete. And Bradford back there along with Chris Young as they elect to let Joel Stavi who's only starting for the ninth time in his career. Missed about a month last year with a broken clavicle when he was playing as a freshman. They let him throw it from his own end zone there. Well, you see the confidence they have in him. He's only making his fourth start on the road in his career. And this is a hostile environment. At night, this place is rocking. They'll run it here. James White into the pile. And down to the five-yard line, a gain of three. Wisconsin has three excellent running backs. White, a senior, who is the active leader in football bowl subdivision in rushing yards. Then you got Melvin Gordon, a big-time sophomore, and also a true freshman, Corey Clement, who is averaging nine yards a carry through two games. Now the opponents weren't very good. UMass out of the map in Tennessee Tech. Now we'll really see the confidence that uh, Gary Anderson has in his young quarterback. Backed up third and eight. Todd Graham runs on the field to call timeout. ASU may have had 12 players on the field that time. Graham One. ran over to make sure that there was no flag. Stabby threw it on first down and will likely have to let it fly here in third and eight when we come back. ESPN College Football Finale brought to you by the all-new 2014 Mitsubishi Outlander and Allstate Insurance, proud supporters of college football. Are you in good hands? The refurbished Tillman Tunnel, named after former Sun Devil and Army Ranger Pat Tillman, who we honor and celebrate, especially this week, with uh, it being 9-11 and those events prompting Tillman to quit the NFL and to join the fight against terrorism. He is a beloved hero here in Tempe. And other work yep. as well, not just here. Third down and eight for the Badgers at their five-yard line. Arizona State, see if it brings pressure. Four-man rush, Dobby has to step up. And a dangerous play. It's incomplete. It's Will Sutton, the All-American, who is in the grill of Stavi. Almost threw a pick. This is a fierce pass rush from Arizona State. They were second in the country in sacks a year ago with 52. And a big reason why Will Sutton, Carl Bradford, they get after the quarterback. And Joe Stavi is very lucky that ball was not intercepted. So now Drew Meyer has to punt from the back of his end zone. And it's a short kick fielded by Smith at the 42 of Wisconsin. He gets sandwiched at the 39. 
Take a look at this Arizona State offense. It's predicated on the zone read like a lot of offenses around the country. But Taylor Kelly, in my opinion, does not get enough credit for his mobility, his feet. He can make you pay if you're going to close on the dive. Now, look, now you have a read on the outside where they're respecting the feet of Taylor Kelly. And Myron Marion Grice has a huge hole up the middle for an easy score. And then the last element of this offense is the play action. It affects the safety, and they throw the post behind. Very effective when those three elements are working together. And here's play action. And Kelly in trouble loses the yardage. Actually got maybe a yard on the play. Here's what you're talking about with their versatility. Reece. Yeah, Marion Grice and DJ Foster are very productive. And we've already seen how Chris Coyle works in the middle of the field. And then that play action vertical threat is so effective. And now they have another guy in Jalen Strong who they can throw the ball to. Couple of fakes. Kelly moving around. And his pass overthrown and incomplete. Intended for Rick Smith. So it'll be third down and eight at the 37 of Wisconsin. Kelly last year had 29 touchdowns, only nine interceptions. Did not make a lot of mistakes last year in their eight-win season. And we've seen an aggressive approach already. A couple of reverses, a fake reverse, and a throw down for you. Officially no down lineman for Wisconsin here on this third down. Everybody's standing up. Kelly in trouble. And his pass too high for the intended receiver, DJ Foster. So fourth down, and as you said earlier, Todd Graham said he wouldn't punt when he gets in Wisconsin territory this deep. And, and it's, a, it's a mindset, and it's an aggressive mindset, but he has confidence in his offense and, and specifically his quarterback to make these kinds of plays. Now they can also quick kick here. Kelly did that a bunch last year. Wisconsin going to call timeout. And maybe he just wants to warn his guys of that. So fourth down and eight for Arizona State. Let's bring in now the third member of our crew, Tom Lugan. Bill, Tom, how are things looking on the field so far? Well, obviously, the field position battle weighs in favor of Arizona State here. And just listening to you guys up top, I understand that they're not overly confident right now in Dom Vizari as their punter. But if you're not good enough to punt the football from this field position and pin Wisconsin back, You've got big problems in the kicking game. I think it's a mistake to go for it right here. You've had Wisconsin pinned back on your first drive. You could put them within the 10 and really put Wisconsin out of their comfort zone on offense. You agree with that, Brian? I do agree with it. And, and like you said, Taylor Kelly is an outstanding pooch punter. And, and that's something that we don't see very much in the college football anymore. But it's very effective. You eliminate the pass rate. Wisconsin does not have anybody deep in case of the pooch kick. I think he just got the safe sign, yep. and that was an audible to the pooch. With no man deep, and now the Wisconsin coach is telling Michael Caputo to get deep, and this is a great job by Kelly. He's a better punter than the guy that actually has the job. <laughs> well, you got to be a bad punter to be a good pooch punter. Oh, and I guess so. <laughs> But that's, that's, that's a very effective play. Line up in formation, see if you like the look, and if you don't like the look on fourth and seven, just audible, back up, and kick the ball down. And isn't this a, a good recipe to try to beat this Wisconsin offense? But I mean, I, I know for any offense is good, but especially Wisconsin, to, to pin them inside the 10 for their first two possessions. I think Todd Graham wants to make this offense go 80 plus yards every time they get the football. He knows how explosive they can be in the running game and how they can wear you down. They shift into a two-back set. Derek Watt missed last week with a hamstring. He's in there fullback blocking for Gordon. And Gordon is wrapped up by Stephon Martin after minimal game. Let's go to the studio and say good evening to Reese Davis. Good evening, Dave. Land Rover driven to another level, and Purdue has pushed Notre Dame to another level. And Devaris Daniels has been just going off. An 82-yard touchdown catch from Tommy Reese. What a night Daniels having. Eight catches, buck 59, couple of scores so far. Meanwhile, here Reese, no score. And Wisconsin for the second time already here. Backed up inside its 10 to start a drive. ASU showing blitz, Davi in trouble, and he's hit and dropped at the three-yard line by Irabor. The ball came out, but they ruled that Stavi was down. So again, Arizona State able to get pressure on the quarterback. They bring the corner off the edge from the right side of your screen. Unblocked, Stavi did not see him. 
And in that situation, there's a couple of ways you can pick this up. Either the quarterback has to throw a quick hitch on the weak side. Obviously, he didn't do that. The left tackle can buzz out and pick him up, or the halfback can see it and abort his fake and go pick up that blitz. One of those three things has to happen, but it didn't happen. Now Stavi lining up in his own end zone. Third down and 14. And Stavi firing high for Aberderis, incomplete. Try to hit him along the sideline, his top receiver, Jared Aberderis, first team all Big Ten, but he had no shot. Well, and he had him open. Arizona State gave him the first down here. He's three or four yards off, and if that ball's on target, Aberderis is going to make that throw. Right now, you get hit in your own end zone, you're stabby, you almost had one intercepted. This is the effect that this Arizona State rush can have on a quarterback if he becomes inaccurate. Arizona State rush nine in the last punt. They're gonna send 10 here. Rick Smith, the only deep man, as Meyer will punt from the back of his end zone. And he almost got it blocked. It's muffed at the 48 and so Smith has to fall on it on the Arizona State side of the field. Great play by Smith because that ball could have rolled another 25 yards. The greatest rivalries in sports continues on Sunday night baseball. Red Sox Yankees at eight. Red Sox won today. Yankees currently two and a half games behind Tampa Bay for that second wild card. It was Nelson that was back there on punt return last time for Rick Smith, and he covered it up for ASU at his 49-yard line where the Sun Devils will operate. They got in the red zone on an earlier possession. Came away with nothing after a lengthy drive. And straight ahead, Marion Grice wrapped up by Tyler Dipple. A gain of two for Grice. A little bit of movement on this Wisconsin front up front dipple that time just kind of looped outside they've got they've got a different philosophy now under Gary Anderson they're gonna move more they're gonna have a three three down front which they're trying to be able to defend the horizontal width of the field better against offenses just like Arizona State there's second down and long and Kelly with time to throw he got one on one on the sideline with a running back against the D lineman Bryce the intended receiver he couldn't pull it in Brendan Kelly out there in coverage at 6-6, covering a 5-11 running back. Well, and, and give Kelly credit. I mean, he at least ran with Grice, and that ball, Grice looked like he was motioning for the ball to be a little bit higher, but that's right in the breadbasket. you got to make that play, and Grice normally does. Kelly 0 for his last four, but he had a drop there. He also had a drop by Ozier in the end zone. Yeah. Well, that ball was thrown a little bit behind him. i gotta, I got to give Ozier credit there. If that ball's on target, it's an easy touchdown. Third down and nine. And they're going to run the football. And Grice has a hole inside the 40-yard line. He pinballs off two Badgers to the 33 for a 17-yard gain. You get out of your gap as a defense. Look at all three of these guys will get out of their gap. And there's a huge crease. Easy cut for Marion Grice. And you run around blocks. And you get out of gaps. You're going to get creased. Here's Grice again. And Dipple is there. Pushes him back after a gain of about two or three. You know, guys, when you line up in that sugar look, you call it a sugar huddle on offense, where the defensive lineman and the linebacker are all kind of standing around. If I'm on offense, I'm checking zone run right now. You're not responsible for a man. You're blocking zone. Second and eight, they fake it to Grice. And Kelly going downfield. Broken up. Flag down. It was Kelly again breaking up the pass intended for Demarie Nelson, junior college transfer. And I think there was a, a flagrant hold on Shelton, the true freshman corner in the backfield. Hailing on the defense number eight. That's a 10 yard penalty. First down. That's Sojourn Shelton from Fort and Lauderdale. There he is right here, and he's just he's gonna get beat on a double move, and he just got his hips turned, and then he had to get that arm on. Otherwise, Rick Smith was gonna be in the end zone all by himself. It's interesting, as you said, a true freshman, but the coaches think he might be the best corner right now. He's got the best feet and the best skills, but he doesn't have the experience. DJ Foster on a nifty play there on the end around, just a shovel pass by Kelly. But Wisconsin not fooled. Southward on the stop, just a one-yard pickup. 
Yes. And I'll go back to, to Shelton, the true freshman. Actually, that is a very smart play because that would have been an easy touchdown for Arizona State. And when you reach that handout, just 15 yards, you yep. still give your defense a chance. Second time the Sun Devils have been in the red zone. They've got over 100 yards so far. Wisconsin, negative two. Badgers haven't been past their own 10 yet. Kelly will give it to Foster into a wall of Badgers. At the 17-yard line, Bo Allen leading the charge for Wisconsin. So it's third down and long. I guess they're in four-down territory, right? Well, based off of what they've done so far in this game, they are in four-down territory. So what that does is it allows you to bring in the running game in third long situations. And Grice behind Kelly for third and seven. They just ran it on third and nine. That's when they had that big crease. So if you're with Wisconsin, you can't fall asleep on the inside run. Kelly going to the end zone. Almost intercepted again by Southward. Rick Smith, the intended receiver, and Southward had it go right through his hands. Southward is a two-year starter and read that play perfectly. He saw the corner route develop and has the speed to get underneath. He just needs to finish that play. He's got his hands on the ball twice now in this game and has not been able to come down the interception. So true freshman Zane Gonzalez will come on and try a field goal, 34-yard attempt. He missed from 33 and 49 last week. He did make a 40-yarder. And this one is good. Boy, that was close. It looked like it was headed to right of the uplight initially, and it somehow curved back around. Well, it looked like it was good, and then it was no good, and then it went right over the top. Tough call. You make the call. <laughs> It's a blackout here in Tempe at a packed house at Sun Devil Stadium. Arizona State looking for maybe its biggest win in the last seven or eight years if it can knock off Wisconsin that comes in riding three straight Big Ten championships. Although they had help last year with Ohio State and Penn State being ineligible in their own division. Kenzel Doe on the return for Wisconsin. And Doe with a crease. They finally get to him with the 27. Now, field goals in college football are reviewable unless the ball goes higher than the goalpost. Then, then you can't look at it because it's strictly subjective, and it looks like here that it's higher than the goalpost, but you really can't tell whether it's good or not. That's about as close as it gets, but you're absolutely right. If that ball is above that upright, it is not reviewable. So it's 3-0 Arizona State, and for Wisconsin, this is fantastic field position based on their first two drives where they start yeah if you're Wisconsin offensively you're settling down now get into your rhythm your game which is run the power get the ball to James White and a little bit of play action they haven't been able to do any of that because of field position so you got a lot in there at fullback and the senior White behind him out on the flat to have Darris. he gets a block from Frederick and is across the 30 yard line here's Reese David it's time for did you see that Brought to you by Verizon on ABC, Notre Dame and Purdue. Boilermakers have lost their lead. Irish up by seven. Oh, the pick six from Bennett Jackson. Notre Dame scored the first 21 points of the fourth quarter, but just seconds ago, Purdue has scored again. It's 31-24, eight and change to go on ABC. Wow, well, Purdue trying to sneak one out against the Irish. Does not look good so far this year. As James White is wrapped up by Bradford. On second and six, he gets about three, so third down coming up. As you watched Wisconsin on film, Brian, this week in comparison to last year, did you really see a lot of differences with them offensively? Not a whole lot, and I, and I can't blame Gary Anderson. If I had this uh, line up front, this amount of beef, I would be uh, approaching this the same way. These guys go 6'6", six, 6'7", six, 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 all 320, and they've got three of the best backs in college football, so I'd do the same thing and give it to them. Stavi will throw a short set, and Abradaris pulls it in for a first down to the 40-yard line. And Abradaris is 
one of the most important players on this offense because you can't just run the ball every single down. You're going to have to convert third downs. Third and four, a great route, good patience. You always know that Aberderis is going to be in the right spot and an accurate throw gets a first down, a big first down for Wisconsin. Aberderis last year led all receivers in yards per reception. His career average is number one among active players. A uh, quick hitter to the true freshman Corey Clement, and he's going nowhere. Four Sun Devils all over him, led by Salomo Fiso, a freshman from Long Beach, California. Uh, it's a one-yard setback. And Todd Graham can't say enough good things about Fiso. He loves his instinct and his toughness. This is a defense that is predicated on movement, on aggression. They want to get in the backfield of Wisconsin and disrupt plays, and that's one of the things Fiso does best. And Gordon in their tailback now for the Badgers on second down and 11. And Gordon hit in the backfield, but able to bounce off one man and get to the 42 for three yards. You know, this defensive front for Arizona State, so undersized. We looked at the two deep coming into the matchup. Only one player on their entire two deep on defense, taller than six foot one. Quite frankly, I'd never even heard of that in major college football. But it's that lack of height in the defensive front, the explosiveness and the quickness that allows them to win the leverage battle. It's one of the reasons why the big guys up front for Wisconsin are having a hard time handling inside penetration and Luke's think about Will Sutton last year he was 267 he's now over 300 pounds and we saw him make a play earlier here in the quarter third down blitz coming in trouble with Stavi steps up hit got rid of the ball complete for a first down well Stavi going to the ground presence of mind to flip it ahead to Jordan Frederick this is a confidence building play for Joel Stavi he holds on to it too long no doubt but to have the presence of mind to flip that ball and get a first down, that can do a lot for your confidence in a hostile environment on the road. Boy, awfully close to that right knee going down before he got rid of it. So for the first time, the Badgers in Arizona State Territory as we wind down the first quarter. Wisconsin getting up points for the first time in two-plus games here. Pressure off the edge and up the middle. It's a screen. James White is loose. Here another first down. He'll come up just short at the 39-yard line, tripped up by Irabor. I love this call from Andy Ludwig, the new offensive coordinator for Wisconsin. You're getting blitzed on every snap. So what do you do? Let them blitz. Come to me, and I'll throw the ball on a screen. This play is inches away from being a touchdown. Great play by the Arizona State corner to get his foot and get him on the ground. He had three blockers in front of him. See if Wisconsin snaps it before the end of the quarter. They will not. So the Badgers driving, thanks to a heads-up play by Stavi. They trail 3-0 to Arizona State after one quarter. New Year's Day 2014, the 100th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. The Badgers have played in the last three. They lost to Stanford a year ago. Arizona State would love to be in the conversation. Boy, UCLA with a terrific road win at Nebraska today with 38 unanswered points. That started the day. We end the day here in Tempe. Here's an end around to Gordon. It was lined up wide, and he stays in bounds. Great cutback. And Melvin Gordon, who averages this year 13 yards per carry, last year was 11 yards a pop, gets inside the 25. And despite the fact that Arizona State has no safety in the game there, they get the ball to Gordon on the edge. First time we've called his name tonight. A very, very smooth athlete that is explosive. Almost looks like he's not running fast, but he certainly is. And he can break it at any time in the game. That was a 19-yard run in the Big Ten title game last year. He had nine carries for 216 yards. The big play back. Here's White. And he breaks a tackle at the 10. All the way down to the two-yard line. Stephon Martin on the stop. It's first and goal for Wisconsin. And this is where this offensive line starts to take over up front. They get to the second level right there. You see a good block. 
by 73. That's Lou Allen. And then James White, you get him to the second level on a safety. Him or Melvin Gordon, they're going to make a move and make a miss. And this is Wisconsin Badger football. They got three tight ends in the game here for first down and goal. Stavi on a rollout. And his pass is pulled in. Touchdown. Jacob Pedersen, first team, all Big Ten tight end a year ago, appeared to get his foot down. Great call and execution. Pedersen very sure-handed. He has possession and feet inbounds. Excellent play for Wisconsin. First and ten to call that play. The confidence you have in Joe Stavi, you know it's going to work because you have to respect the power of Wisconsin running the football. He has six touchdown passes now through two games and a quarter as they're reviewing this. And last year he had six touchdowns in six starts. I think they're waiting for uh, Big J Havistein. <laughs> Big Rob Havistein. He's 6'8", 340 pounds. It's hard to miss him. They needed an 11th guy. He's 11 and a half. <laughs> the extra point makes it 7-3 Wisconsin. As French puts it through and the touchdown pass by Stavi to Pedersen. And the Badgers, after finally getting decent field position, make the Sun Devils pay. A battle between division rivals looking to avoid an 0-2 start. Steelers, Bengals, Monday Night Football coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown at 6.30. The Steelers did not look good first game of the year. Couldn't protect. Now Marquise Counts, Pouncey is out. Ben Roethlisberger is going to face a stiff pass rush from the Bengals. A lot of people think the Bengals are a Super Bowl team. You being one of them? I am. Oh. Only one game They're on record. It's okay. Stand by it. <laughs> Here's the return out past the 15 yard line. And near the 25. It's Darby. And so that's where Arizona State will start. Second year for Todd Graham at ASU after one year at Pitt and a handful of seasons at Tulsa. Eight wins a year ago, five and four in the Pac 12. This would be his signature win if they can get it, not just for him, for the program over the last seven or eight years. If they can knock off the Badgers here at home. It's a lot of momentum, Brian, right now with this program. A lot of people here in the area like what they've seen so far from Graham. Well, the last four years under Dennis Erickson, they didn't have a winning season, and then all of a sudden Todd Graham comes in, they're eight and five. The problem with eight and five is they didn't beat anybody with a winning record at the end of the year outside of Navy in the bowl game. So they've got to win some games against good opponents. Out on the flat to Smith and gets away from the freshman Shelton, but can't beat Southward. It takes him down. At the 32. Now, I think that Arizona State and Todd Graham realize it's put up or shut up time. High expectations. I think this is a team in the preseason that generally gets high reviews, but do you trust them to close the deal? This is the year, I think, with the schedule over the next few weeks, they got to get it done. And yeah, we'll talk about that schedule after this play. It's a stretch over the next month. Ridiculous here as uh, Kelly throws and dropped again by Smith. His second drop. Sophomore that. 14 catches a year ago. They need him to make the easy plays. Yeah, that's a ball Rick Smith should catch. Is a good read by Taylor Kelly. Had the zone read on the inside, and the defense collapsed, and it's wide open for Rick Smith. And it's just focus in a big game at night. National TV, you got to make those kinds of plays if your team's going to win. They're at Stanford next week, then USC at home, then Notre Dame in Dallas. Arlington, as that pass is broken up. Nearly intercepted by Shelton. It was intended for Jalen Strong. It's fourth down, and Arizona State will kick the football. Well, any question marks about a true freshman on the outside? Going 5-9. That's all Shelton the corner is. He got his hands on him a little bit, but he was in great position. And the reason he didn't get that pass interference because he got his eyes back to the quarterback and made a play on the ball. That's well done by Sojourn Shelton. So Bizarre will punt it. And Doe is the deep man. It's a horrible snap. And the ball rolling around inside the five. Bazaar's got a fall on it. He doesn't. The Badgers appear to have it. It's a touchdown for Wisconsin. Bo Allen. Well, one official is saying, no, he wasn't in. Now they're saying touchdown. They talk about it. They come to an agreement. It's a touchdown for the Badgers. 
The thing that scared Todd Graham the most when he talked to them yesterday was the kicking game. He had a new punter, new kicker, and this time a bad snap right there is your kicker. He's got to kick it out of the back of the end zone and take the safety. But how many times do you think that Arizona State practiced this and Bizarre practiced that right there? You we, just knew know that. we knew they had problems with the kicking game. That shouldn't be one of them right there. You got to at least give your punter a chance. Horrible snap by Easton Wallstrom. But you have compounding mistakes. A bad snap, but then a bad mistake by Bizarre. Just kick the ball out of the back of the end zone. It's a difference between seven and two points. A fall on. He tried to pick it up. And the point after from French makes it 14 to 3, Wisconsin. These are the reasons why we have the conversation about Arizona State and they can't get that signature win. They can't beat that team that's good with a winning record. It's mistakes like this. The finale brought to you by the all new Kia Soul, sleeker and more sophisticated than ever, and the Cree LED bulb, the biggest thing since the light bulb. Shot of downtown Phoenix, the Diamondbacks 15th annual Hispanic Heritage Day kicked off with a street festival outside Chase Field before the D-backs Rockies game. And coming up Tuesday on ESPN at 8, Hispanic Heritage Month kicks off with a one-hour celebration counting down the top 10 Hispanic athletes of all time. So Wisconsin with a special teams touchdown on a botch snap. And now the Badgers kicking deep. And Bryce. Or Foster rather will, that is Grice, excuse me, will take a knee and it will come out of the 25 for Arizona State. So now the Sun Devils trailing by 11 points. See uh, what Taylor Kelly has in this situation. Well, if I'm Todd Graham, the message on the sideline of my offense is take a deep breath. Okay, we had a mistake. It wasn't our fault. It was a kicking game, but don't let one mistake lead to a negative drive here. We need to put some plays together, get some first downs, get our tempo on offense, which is the best part of our team, get the ball to number one and number eight and number 87. Those are your guys. Kelly, just two of his last nine. They'll move the pocket for him here, and his pass on target to Smith. Out of bounds at the 32-yard line for a gain of seven. No, I really like guys that they're moving the pocket there a little with Taylor Kelly. Get him out on the perimeter, run past threat, because Wisconsin has decided that they feel good enough locking Sojourn Shelton, the true freshman, up at 21, Jalen Strong, man-to-man. -man. They moved the pocket a lot from last year. They'll throw from the pocket here and dump it off for a first down to Coyle. Chris Coyle, who had 57 catches last year, gets eight yards and a first down for Arizona State. And Coyle is the quarterback's best friend. I mean, he catches everything. You know exactly where he's going to be. If I'm Taylor Kelly, I'm going to continue to feed him and play action because you know he's going to be there if he can make the play. Here's Grice. Pushed back after a nice gain on first down. About seven yards. Joe Schobert, a walk-on, leading the charge at linebacker for Wisconsin. You know, in the passing game, and Brian, we talked about this a bit in the break, getting Marion Grice, getting D.J. Foster matched up out of the two or three number slot against a linebacker or a strong safety, you have to match up to their advantage. Kelly will throw here on second down, steps up, takes off. And Kelly gets the first down before he's tackled from behind by Warren Herring on the Wisconsin side of the field at the 47. And that's exactly what Arizona State needed to get a couple of first downs so that they can get in their up-tempo. And Taylor Kelly to make a play with his feet. He's been such a good distributor of the ball over the last year and a half. And now you see the growth and the maturity of Taylor Kelly becoming a leader and making the right decisions at the right time. Kelly's pass a little behind Foster, but he makes the catch. And that's another Arizona State first down. Second-year starter, Taylor Kelly. This is the first time in five years they've had a returning starter at the quarterback position. And uh, he's delivering here in this drive. And when you get D.J. Foster lined up in the slot, he's right here. It's a mismatch. They don't have... This is Borland right over top of him. They cannot cover him with a linebacker. Kelly firing over the middle and going low to make the catch is Jalen Strong inside the 25. It's another Sun Devil first down. Strong, a junior college transfer. 
from Philadelphia, and they think can be a difference maker with this offense. Well, he's the element that they did not have a year ago, a guy that can get vertical down the field and make big plays. They run Smith into the backfield. Kelly will keep it here and get nailed by Borland. No gain on the play. Borland, first team all Big Ten linebacker a year ago. And you can just see this Wisconsin defense, how big they are compared to the Arizona State offense. And can they continue to run in the heat? Very hot tonight in the desert. Can they continue to have the condition and keep up? Here comes Borland up the middle. And Kelly delivers inside the 20-yard line. Grace inside of the 10 and cut down at the 5-yard line by Caputo, who's shaken up after making the tackle. First and goal for the Sun Devils. And that's Grice one-on-one -on -one with Brendan Kelly. Kelly's 6'6", 255 pounds. As a linebacker, you can't, you can't ask him to cover a guy like Marion Grice. Very shifty. And if you continue to find these matchups for Arizona State, you're going to have a lot of productive plays. Now they're 0 for 2 on touchdowns in the red zone. They did get a field goal that was very close in the first quarter. I'd love to get six here. After that disaster on special teams, Grice down to the one yard line where he's pinned by Borland and Muldoon. So it's second down and goal for ASU. You see Marion Grice signaling to the sideline, run that one again. I, 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 if I get that look again, I can get in. I don't doubt they'll give it to him. Wisconsin is selling out for the run. Look at everybody packed up and man to man across the board. It's Grice. It's a touchdown. Eleven rushing touchdowns last year. That's his second rushing touchdown this season. On that drive, Taylor Kelly, perfect passing, 5 of 5, 60 yards. Well, Wisconsin may have had the size, but Arizona State had the numbers, and they just ran the zone read inside, and they didn't block Ethan Armstrong on the edge. He had to make a decision whether to take the quarterback or the running back, and he was caught in no man's land. Special teams have been an adventure so far in the kicking game. Here's the extra point attempt. There was a blocked extra point in the meeting in 2010 that was the difference when Wisconsin beat ASU by one. That one was good. And if you're Ethan Armstrong right here on the edge, you can't be right. You got to take the quarterback or the running back, and it's no man's land. The J Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville in Tempe. Wisconsin leading by four despite running 21 fewer plays than Arizona State. What was the difference, Brian, for ASU on that last touchdown drive? Well, I think they found the matchup that they like. They've got uh, their running back on a linebacker, and when Grice or DJ Foster gets matched up on these big linebackers for Wisconsin, it's advantage Arizona State. The route kicking off, and it's going to come out to the 25. And we'll go back and look at this. And I'll show you. This is Brendan Kelly. He's 6'6", 255 pounds. And here's Marion Grice. He's just going to come out in the backfield, and we're going to clear out with the line, with the outside receivers. And there's no way that Brendan Kelly, the size that he is, can stay with Grice. Arizona State and Mike Norville has found the matchups that they like, and they're going to continue to get those backs out of the backfield. They've got to get 10 to 15 touches. That's their goal for both Foster and Grex. Interesting matchup with the Oak coordinator for Arizona State, Mike Norville, 31 years old. Dave Aranda is under 40. Yeah, two really good young football coaches. Well, three men in the backfield here for Wisconsin, including Pedersen on first down at the Badger 25. And a big hole crossing the 40-yard line is Gordon. And he's pushed out of bounds in Arizona State territory. Or he was untouched until he was pushed out at the 45-yard line, a 30-yard run. And look at the block by Pedersen, the tight end. Just comes through. That's a great formation for Wisconsin. They have two fullbacks in the back, so they can go either way. They're balanced. And how many times have we seen Wisconsin backs from Dane to Ball? to white to get to the second level without even being touched it's almost not even fair 
Ball won the dope. Walker Ward, he was a number two pick by the Broncos, second round. Yet they just find other guys and plug it in and have success running the ball. Stavi going to air it out. Got one-on-one -on -one coverage. And Amber Darris wasn't looking for it. Pass was overthrown. Carrington was trying to run with Aberderis. Second down and ten. Stavi had completed his last five passes before that incompletion. Well, more important than that, Stavi came into this game with 102 attempts without an interception. Now, early in the game, he almost threw one to the other team, but if he protects the football and they run the ball well, that's the recipe for success for Wisconsin. Derek Watt, younger brother of J.J., who played at Wisconsin, now one of the best players in the NFL. A fullback kind of helps spring James White, but White wrapped up by Anthony Jones for no gain on the play. Jones from here in Chandler, a senior, makes the stop. And they're trying to find the replacement for Brandon McGee. They moved Chris Young from that spur linebacker position to will linebacker. And now Anthony Jones, at only 215 pounds, is playing that spur. And Todd Graham needs Anthony Jones to play bigger than he really is. And that was a nice play. So third down and 10. After a 30-yard run by Gordon, nothing in the last two plays. Stavi leveled as he throws, and the pass way high and incomplete. Anthony Jones. That's and it's Will Sutton that's yeah. shaken up on the play. It was Anthony Jones that leveled the quarterback, Stavi. He's hurt, and then Will Sutton is hurt. He's mad. Will Sutton upset. Maybe he felt there was a cheap shot by an offensive lineman by Wisconsin. What a hit, though. It looked like a clean hit by Anthony Jones. Don't know if the hit on Will Sutton was clean. He feels it wasn't. Let's Absolutely. see. Absolutely. Anthony Jones came off the slot. He's unaccounted for in protection, and he got a shot right in the chest of Joel Stavi. You hope that that's just getting the wind knocked out of you. See the big rib pads for Stavi. That, that, that'll protect him. Every quarterback should have that, and you hope he just got the wind knocked out of him. And Will Sutton was getting blocked by two Badgers, but both guys were going high. It wasn't a chop block, but let's see what happens from another look here. There's, he's just trying to get to the quarterback, and he's engaged right there, and then he gets a, a knock from Llewellyn. Hard to tell because, again, that was legal. Two guys were high on him. And you know what? Will Sutton had a lot to do with that hit on the quarterback because Llewellyn could have stayed in his gap and picked up Anthony Jones, but he decided to go and double-team Will Sutton and left a free lane for Anthony Jones. And I'm able to pick up what happened after you saw two players engage with Will Sutton, but he didn't like it. He felt there was a cheap shot made by a Badger. So Meyer will punt to Robert Nelson, who waits for it at the 10. Wisconsin's backup quarterback, by the way, is Kirk Phillips, who's in his sixth year. He's battled injury problems himself. We'll see if Stavi's able to go on the next drive. And fair caught at the 12-yard line by Nelson. Arizona State back on offense when we come back to Sun Devil Stadium. The chase to the Sprint Cup officially begins Sunday at Chicagoland Speedway. NASCAR's best drivers begin the 10-week battle for the championship. The Geico 400, Sunday at 1 on ESPN. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Tom Lugan, Bill and Tempe, Arizona State with the football, trailing Wisconsin by four, midway through the second quarter. Fourth game of the day between Big Ten, Pac-12 schools. Big Ten with one win, that was Ohio State. UCLA and Washington with wins for the Pac-12. Here's Kelly on the keeper, and he gets nailed. At the 15-yard line, gain of two. Tom, were you able to find out what happened there with Will Sutton? Well, yeah, Will Sutton, he's not injured. He's going to be okay. He'll come back into the game. But he really felt like he was high load on an illegal chop block that wasn't called, felt like it was intentional. That's what got him so riled up and so upset. They're getting him calmed down on the sideline right now. He'll re-enter the game. All right, second down and eight for ASU. And Kelly on the rollout, and again, Smith can't make the play. Hard to tell if Hillary got a hand on it or if Smith dropped it. 
He's already had two go through his hands in this ball game. Boy, you already start to wonder the first, the second, and now the third drop is just getting in the head of Rick Smith. Wow. And that ball is right on the money. And, you know, as a quarterback, you start to wonder. And then once your quarterback starts to have reservations about throwing ball, then you've got to replace the guy uh, on the field because as a coach, you just can't afford to have a guy out there that's not confident catching the ball. He's on the sideline right now. It's Kelly. Likely to throw here on third down and long. We'll see if Wisconsin brings pressure. They got everybody standing up at the line of scrimmage. They rush five. And Kelly toward the sideline overthrows his intended receiver, Nelson. So it's fourth down, and the Sun Devils have to kick it. Chris Borland with pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, I'll give Wisconsin credit. They are confusing the offensive line with that. With all those guys standing up, it's very difficult to declare. And why that's difficult is the offensive linemen typically see four or three defensive linemen down, and then they count two more or one more. And right now, they don't know how to count those guys standing up all around. They're being able to get pressure off the edge. I wonder if uh, the long snapper, Walsham, is a little nervous after his last snap went wide and ended up being Wisconsin touchdown. This one a little bit off the mark. Bazaar had to move to his right, but he's able to catch and release. And here's Doe on his 45-yard line, gets a block. And Doe tracked down from behind at the Arizona State 40-yard line. All right, let's look at Arizona State's defense. They've had success getting in the backfield. They brought a bunch of pressure corner blitzes off the edge, which has forced the ball inside. They've brought linebackers from the second level. They've brought two off the edge. This is a corner and a will linebacker. And they keep their gap consistency in in the core of that defense and they've been able to find creative ways to manage such a big offensive line coming out of every snap so far white with 24 rushing yards Gordon with 53 Corey Clement with one carry and he lost yardage this is white at tailback they bring Gordon in motion and white will get the carry very patient waits for his blockers to clear space and gets four yards to the 36. Uh, and the thing that White does so well is his, he's patient. He knows how these plays are blocked, the power and the stretch. Those are his bread and butter. He knows exactly how they're blocked. He knows exactly where his reads are. And the patience and the vision allows him to pick and choose his holes. And he's been very effective. Now it's Gordon in there with Watt at fullback on second down and six. Will Sutton is back in the game for Arizona State on the D-line. And Gordon hit in the backfield and drop. Irabor was there first, and Jackson Hood also for Arizona State. And we just showed you two off the edge with the corner, and there's Irabor again. And Wisconsin, Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator, you've got to be able to adjust. Here it comes into the boundary. You've got to expect that. Defenses love to bring the corner into the boundary because it's less time for him to get in the backfield. You can't just blindly run the ball into the boundary against this Arizona State defense. And it's a three-yard loss, so third down and nine. Stavi got hit pretty hard in the last third down when Arizona State brought pressure. And here they come again. Stavi tipped and almost caught on the redirection. It was intended for Duckworth, and then it ricocheted towards Frederick, but it hits the ground, and Wisconsin with fourth down and nine. Another punt coming. Arizona State is just sitting at 10 yards. There they all are. They're not worried about the ball going deep at all, and they're going to react to the ball. Very difficult to complete underneath when the defense is not worried about any vertical stretch, and right now Arizona's playing downhill on defense. It was Darby with a pass breakup, so Wisconsin punting. That's consecutive possessions now they've been inside the Arizona State 45-yard line and had to kick it back to ASU. Myers punt, pretty good. Down right at the four-yard line by Chris Borland. Arizona State backed up inside its five, Tom. Well, right now, Arizona State's got a real field position problem, but the other problem that they have is for a team that's supposed to have a distinct speed advantage, Brian, you referenced the confusion that's being created up front by the different looks Wisconsin's got on defense, but right now, I'm not seeing any separation from the ASU wide receivers. Wisconsin's secondary, secondary has them in check. There's no way, for, nowhere for Taylor, Taylor Kelly to throw the football. Well, it doesn't help when uh, your receiver drops three balls, too, in the middle of the field, which has happened with Smith. And now Arizona State in a situation where Kelly's lining up in the end zone. And they're going to run it. Here's Bryce. 
Does a good job. Gets out to the nine-yard line to pick up a five. I think what Wisconsin has found out quickly early in this season is that they've got some guys on the back end that are young, but that are talent talented and can cover. And Sojourn Shelton, the corner number eight, has really impressed. I think Caputo is a safety, has been in man-to-man -man coverage at times. And Southwood's their best player in the secondary. Out of an empty set, Kelly in trouble. And he's got a completion to Grice for a first down at the 16-yard line, a seven-yard game. Well, there's that matchup, guys. You got Brendan Kelly, 97, the 255-pound outside linebacker, matched up downfield with Marion Grice. That time, Kelly protecting himself with some depth, keeping the ball in front of him. Very smart, heady play by the outside linebacker. And here it is again, the same matchup. You wonder when Wisconsin will go to their nickel and dime package. Foster on the carry, big hole. Up to the 30-yard line where he's grabbed to the ankles by Southward. Still a 15-yard gain for D.J. Foster. And this is the versatility of D.J. Foster. He lines up as a wide receiver. All of a sudden, now he's in the backfield and he's running it back. And he's got a lead blocker. You just can't defend that with any kind of certainty. They go back to Foster. And this time, he gets driven to the dirt at the line of scrimmage. So no gain on the play. It'll bring up second down and long. Brandon Kelly on the stop. Arizona State rotating backs. He had DeAndre Lewis in there, along with Foster. Two plays ago on that big run by Foster. And now Grice is in there with Lewis. For second and nine. There's a little bit of mis uh, confusion here. I don't think they expected D.J. Foster to come out of the game. He got dinged a little bit, and DeAndre Lewis didn't find nowhere to line up. Well, here's second down and nine. And Borland coming off the edge. Kelly dumps it off incomplete, trying to hit Jalen Strong. I remember sitting in Brett Bielema's office when Chris Borland was a true freshman. Nobody knew about him, and Bielema said, hey, watch this kid. He put the tape on a Borland jumping over two guys to block a punt. And before you knew it, the guy was an all-Big Ten linebacker. Well, he's the poster child for linebackers in the Big Ten, and he's going to play a lot on Sundays as soon as his days are done at, uh, at UW. But... He is an outstanding football player, very smart, heady, and he's become the unquestioned leader of this team. Third down and nine. Orland coming again. And Kelly got a man wide open. It's DeAndre Lewis on the catch. There is a penalty flag down on the far side. Looks like it's going to be on Wisconsin. So this will stick in a big play through the air to DeAndre Lewis. Holding on the defense number 21. That penalty is declined. Was over the play. First down. Well, you're going to get a blitz, and who's going to be left is Connor O'Neill right here, and he has to cover the blitz, and he just runs right by DeAndre Lewis. He lets him get by. You got to get a jam on him. That's football 101. If you're playing too deep as a linebacker, you can't let a guy run right by. You got to get a shoulder on him and knock him off the route. Well, first and 10 for Arizona State in Badger territory. Kelly's pass is pulled in at the 41 by Foster. And if you're Wisconsin, are you concerned with the number of, of third downs that uh, you've allowed Arizona State to convert? Absolutely. I mean, I think that Wisconsin knew coming in that this is an explosive offense. They haven't had any explosive plays. They've converted third downs, but so far Wisconsin hasn't given up the explosive play. And I think they're happy with that. Sun Devils 4 of 9 on third down. Here's second down and 5 on the 40-yard line of Wisconsin. Orland coming again, and Kelly can't get away from him. No, he does! How did he get out of there? And he almost gets a first down. Normally a sure tackler. Borland had him dead to rights. Kelly slipped through his fingers. He said at the outset, I don't think Taylor Kelly gets enough credit for his ability to escape and his feet. He was short, so it's third down and in inches. And Kelly... Oh. Appears to have the first down, even though it didn't look pretty. Got Armstrong on the tackle. There's a first down for Arizona State as we near the two-minute mark here in the half. All right, it goes down in the books as a conversion, but you're, you're right. It was not pretty. Arizona State about to run its 50th play of the half. Wisconsin's run 23. And their, their goal is to run 90 plays in a game, so they're way above schedule. First and 10. Kelly to pass. Gonna go deep. 
And it is incomplete, intended for Strong, and now a flag. It took a while for that flag to come in, but they threw it on Darius Hillary, who was defending Strong at the 15-yard line. Pac-12 officials, Jack Folley. Pass interference on the defense. That's a 15-yard penalty, first down. They're trying to execute the back shoulder throw to Jalen Strong, and Hillary, just a true sophomore, is in position. And, boy, I didn't see a whole lot right oh. there. I didn't know maybe before. This looked like another drop. Wow. Through his hands. First it's at least four by Arizona State, but does, in this situation, work out for them? Ball at the 20. Have two timeouts left. Ten play of the drive coming up. Kelly to the air again. Firing end zone. Incomplete. And another flag. This one on Shelton. Again, it was intended for Strong. And this time, I think Shelton had his left hand on the back of the receiver. Anytime that... Official that's lined up under the goal post sees that he's looking at that hand on the left side and did he get his hand on the back before the ball got there? That's an interference on the defense number eight. Grabbing and restricting the receiver. First down. Take a look. Here he is. Does he get his left hand on the receiver? Like he did. And that, and that official in the back, he's the one looking. There's that left yeah. hand. Yeah, yep. the arm. That's a good call. The call before, not so good. I think that was a good call. And the thing about Shelton is he's such a good athlete with such good feet, such good speed and instincts that he's going to be in a lot of those situations where he's close to the wide receiver. He's not going to be beat a whole lot. So he has to learn how to be disciplined with his hands when the ball's in the air. He, he has gotten stronger. He's still got a ways to go. They listed him at 172. He arrived in Madison at 150 pounds. <laughs> 150. Not too many 150-pound corners in the Big Ten in your day. First down and goal at the five for Arizona State. Here's Kelly. And he's in trouble, and down he goes. Borland forced to cut back, and then he's dropped by Ethan Hemer for a loss on the play. It's second down as we are inside 90 seconds to go in the half. Arizona State trailed 14 to 3. An impressive drive by the Sun Devils to march down the field. And cut the Badger lead to four. Now they look to take the lead. This drive started for Arizona State on its own four. And the Sun Devils now at the Badger six for second down. Kelly. And underneath, it's caught. Gamage trying to get in. And he's down inside the one. So it'll be third and goal from inside the one for Arizona State with 50 seconds to go. Looked like his knee came down just before that ball crossed the uh, goal line. Yeah, yep. clearly it's down and... And they, they're, quick, they're quick to the line. They want to snap it. Kelly's ready on third down. Here's Grice, and he's going to lose yardage. Bo Allen made the tackle. And now Todd Graham runs on the field to call timeout as he's got a decision make here. Well, Todd Graham ran the same play thinking he would get it, and great job by Wisconsin D-line. I'm Reese Davis coming up on the BMW Halftime Report. Alabama and Texas A&M play a thriller, a good old-fashioned SEC shootout. Big Ten and Pac-12, Arizona State can win the day for the Pac-12, and the Irish able to escape. Mark and Lou are ready to rock and roll at halftime. So Arizona State electing to kick the field goal here rather than go for it on fourth down and goal from the two-yard line. Zane Gonzalez, who barely made a 34-yarder, will attempt a 19-yard field goal. Wisconsin calls a timeout. Looked like Connor O'Neill was running on the field late. I think this is the right call if you're if you're Todd Graham. So far, this game has been low scoring. It's only 14-10, and get to get to a one-point game, that's a big difference than a four-point game. Their offense, Wisconsin's, has scored one touchdown. The, the other touchdown came in a horrible snap by the, uh, right. the long snapper for Arizona State, recovered by Bo Allen for a touchdown. 
So if you're Todd Graham, you'd be pretty happy overall with your defense. You've only allowed Wisconsin to run 23 plays, and they're absolutely two of six on third down. This is a Wisconsin offense that can embarrass people. You go back to the game against Nebraska last year, they scored 70 points yeah. on Nebraska. So if you're Arizona State defense, you've been able to move around and make some plays and at least slow down that rushing attack. So good call here and keep it a close game. Good call if it goes in. 19-yard <laughs> field goal try for Gonzalez. Snap high. But he puts it through. And Arizona State cuts the Wisconsin lead to one. Again, Easton Wallstrom having a little trouble with the snaps. Berkovici, the holder, got it down, though, and 14-13 Wisconsin. Well, not only is it just a one-point game, but also Todd Graham has been able to run a lot of plays on offense. Take a look, 52 plays. And you got to hope, if you're Arizona State, that that's going to take its toll on the Wisconsin defense in the second half. With as hot as it is here tonight, you hope that that would uh, take, uh, take its toll on that big defense for Wisconsin. Can they live on this in, in Pac-12 play? On what? Well, what we're seeing here, we're, we're defensively, well, you're, you're relying on smaller players against teams like Stanford that are going to pound the football, and then they're having to run 52 plays and a lot of variations of formations and trick plays. Well, if your defense, the biggest question last year was not the offense, it was the defense. They scored 34, 38 points a game last year. They, they scored plenty of points. It was the defense that let them down, and so far against this style anyway, uh, they're holding their own, so uh, of course you can play like this in the pack. And Doe will take a knee. It'll come out to the 25. Lugs, you, you agree with what Brian just said there about what I, happens in Pac-12 play? Right, I do. And, you know, we talked earlier this week, uh, great defense for Arizona State, I think, to some degree, is relative to the rest of the Pac-12. Uh, their speed, their athleticism. I think Todd Graham's done a great job of accentuating the strengths of not only what they inherited, but what the players bring to the table. And so you can't be who you're not. I think it's that simple. They want to get longer. They want to get bigger. But their front people are as good as anybody in the Pac-12, maybe outside of Stanford right now, and that's a distinct advantage when they get in the league play. Yeah, and I think Stanford is a class uh, of defense in the Pac-12, obviously, but don't forget Arizona State. They led the Pac-12 in a lot of categories, past defense, yeah, interceptions, and tackles for loss. So They led the nation in tackles for loss. It was, it was just could they stop the run, and so far in this game, they only allowed 70 yards rushing to one of the better rushing teams in all of the FBS so job well done in the first half still think though there is the question about Taylor Kelly is he a good enough quarterback to win games with his arm in the Pac-12 where you have players like Marcus Mariota and some good quarterbacks in the Pac-12 this Taylor is something Kelly. Todd Graham does by the way at halftime of every game this is not unusual I, I think Taylor Kelly is plenty good enough to win in the Pac-12 yeah Mariota is a great quarterback Kevin Hogan's a great quarterback there's some good quarterbacks but Taylor Kelly I don't think gets the credit he deserves with his ability to run the football and, and make good decisions. I think plenty good enough to win the Pac-12. Again, Todd Graham does this at every halftime. He'll speak to his team on the field, and then they'll go into the locker room. 14-13, Wisconsin leads by one. Time now to check in with Reese, Mark, and Lou in the studio. Oh, here on ESPN from Tempe, Sun Devil Stadium, where Wisconsin leads Arizona State by one, 14 to 13, as we get you ready for the start of the second half. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Tom Lugan, Bill as well. Brian, Wisconsin leading, but were they the better team in the first half? Well, they, I think Arizona State was certainly the aggressor, and if you take away that one poor special teams play where they gave up the touchdown, it would be a 13-7 game, but Arizona State's defense has been aggressive. They've been able to slow the rushing attack and slow Melvin Gordon and James White. They only have 71 yards uh, in the first half, and that's that's a win because they've added 390 yards a game coming in. If you take away the 32 yards that were counted against their rushing that they lost on that botched snap that led to a Wisconsin touchdown. They actually outrushed Wisconsin in that first half. Here's Doe across the 20, and that's it. Slam down there. 
And one of the reasons why they had such success in slowing that running game was they brought pressure off the edge. They brought corners on several plays right here. You see Irabor get in the backfield and force James White into the rest of the defense. And then again, this time he'll make the play two guys off the edge. And that's something that Arizona State has found a weakness in this power running game for Wisconsin. Now the key is can Wisconsin make the adjustments? They know that these things are going to come. The corner cats into the boundary. Maybe they'll start to have the answer and start to fan some of those offensive line and have that fullback get out there and block that corner. 71 rushing yards, only 30 passing yards. Stavi was 5 of 11, but he did have a touchdown pass in that first half. They bring Gordon in motion and give it to him. And on the cutback, he's got room. Gordon across the 40. A home run threat off to the races. They won't get him. Melvin Gordon with a touchdown on the first play from scrimmage of the second half. He led the nation in yards per carry last year, averaging 13 yards a pop this year. That average just went way up after that touchdown run there, 80 yards. And he's just so smooth and patient. And he gets in the open field, and nobody's going to catch him. And great adjustment already. First play of the second half, they run the ball on the perimeter rather than trying to slam it up inside. One after by French. Makes it 21-13, Wisconsin. So many cats into the boundary, and all of a sudden, here he comes, and they're just going to hand him the football. And he gets a great block from Aberderis on the outside, and he does the rest. But... They've got so many blitzes and a great adjustment. You get a blitz into the boundary and then run the ball wide with your with your most explosive back and get them in the open field. They had 71 rushing yards in the first half. They get 80 on this play, the first of the second half. Gordon to the house. And the Badgers extend their lead to eight. People think that Wisconsin was, is not an explosive offense. You're mistaken. Last year in 2012, they were fourth in the FBS with plays over 40 yards. And a lot of those are running plays just like that. They're not all passing plays. So this is an offense that wears you down with a big offensive line. And then they get Melvin Gordon and James White and some of these guys a crease, and it's to the house. We talked about the similarities with Wisconsin's offense under Brett Bielema, but I don't know if we saw as many of those jet sweeps with the running back coming no, in motion, right? That's a great point. Bad for the pencil knife play by play guy. <laughs> Every now and then. Here's Grice on the return. And hit hard to the 20 yard line. Take a look at our first half stats brought to you by America's Navy. And again, that's 71 rushing yards just obliterated on one play. The turnover by Arizona State was on that botch punt that led directly to a touchdown. 52 plays run by the Sun Devils, more than double what Wisconsin had in the first half. Yeah, and out of all those stats, that's the one to keep an eye on in the second half with this Wisconsin defense. They played so many plays. Hopefully they had some time to get some intravenous fluids at halftime, and they can make it through 30 more minutes. They'll start on their 20-yard line, the Sun Devils first down. And Kelly going to pull it back, and he's in trouble. Keeps his balance, and they finally get into the ground at the 23. It's Chris Borland in there first for Wisconsin. Bo Allen around the play as well. And Brendan Kelly had pressure on Taylor Kelly, no relation on that play. Kelly in that first half threw 27 passes. Last year set the school record at Arizona State for completion percentage and his 29 touchdown passes, second most for a single year in school history. He'll keep it here. He gets leveled by Allen a couple of yards short of the first down. So third down coming up. Well, we've talked a lot about Arizona State's defense, but give Wisconsin's defense credit as well. This is a very uh, difficult offense to defend, sideline to sideline. And so far they've tackled well in space and contained it. That's Foster in motion on third down and short. 
And they move the pocket here for Kelly. And it's Foster trying to make the grab. He can't. Incomplete. It's Caputo on the coverage. He left earlier in the game with an injury. It's a guy that had major neck surgery in February and missed the spring. Badger's glad to have him back. He makes the play here. Yeah, great timing there to get there just as the ball arrives. Not too soon to get a pass interference call. And Caputo's a guy that they need in the back end. Just a true sophomore. They need his coverage skills. And when you pair him with Southward, the other safety who's excellent, and their young uh, corner Shelton, they've got a, a really good young nucleus in the secondary. They spread it out here to snap it. And that's the best snap of the day for Wallstrom and the punt by the Czar. It hit a Badger. It's loose at the 33. It wasn't the return man that it hit. There was another Wisconsin player, and Arizona State appears to have the ball. They do. It hit Shelton, and it's recovered by the Sun Devils. It looked like Sojourn Shelton on the right side of your screen was trying to block. And that ball came down and hit him. It's the job of Doe, the returner, to yell Peter. And he doesn't yell Peter, so Shelton doesn't get out of the way. He's just trying to make the block. That's as much on the return man as it is on Shelton. And Taylor with a recovery for Arizona State. So a big play there for ASU. Hey, finally someone right for me, he says. <laughs> Ball on the 33 of Wisconsin. Can the Sun Devils capitalize? Clock down to two. Here comes Borland. Kelly gets rid of it, and he throws an interception. Picked off by Southward inside the 10. But give Chris Borland credit there, as he is right in the face of the quarterback, Taylor Kelly. And the pass was too high. Borland is such a versatile player. Even on first down, they'll use him to rush the passer. Just He's too quick for the offensive guard. He forces a high throw there, no question and a turnover matched with another turnover for Wisconsin. First pick in 131 pass attempts by Taylor Kelly, but it was a big one just after they had recovered. A muff punt by Wisconsin. Chris Borland forces a high throw. It's intercepted, and now Wisconsin back on offense. Had five plays so far this half. Got two turnovers and a touchdown already. Here's White straight ahead, and he gets about four. Brought down by Carl Bradford. Haven't called his name a whole lot. Outstanding junior who had 20 and a half tackles for a loss last year. And counter to what we typically see from Wisconsin, it has been tough for them to run the ball in between the tackles. There's just been a lot of movement up front and, and it's been really the perimeter runs with Melvin Gordon that have really hurt Arizona State. They go out of two back and that's Pedersen in the backfield as well. And here's Gordon. Got to keep his feet and he gets a couple to the 16 yard line. Anthony Jones on the hit. Tom. And guys we've uh, got an injury down here on the field. I believe it is Will Sutton number 90 for Arizona State. We all know how important that would be as Bill Martin the Arizona State trainer comes out to attend to Sutton. Guys, I think that Arizona State defensively, they, they prepare the entire week for the vertical downhill power running line, lateral horizontal stuff with the jet sweeps, including Melvin Gordon out there in the slot. I think it's got them guessing on their heels a little bit, not quite sure how to respond to it. We got Andy Ludwig, a new offensive coordinator at Bennett San Diego State, Cal, and Oregon. That's uh, where he met Gary Anderson at Utah. Anderson was there before taking the Utah State head coaching job and you know we're used to seeing power football uh, out of the Badgers and we've seen that tonight of course but also the uh, the jet sweeps Yeah, and Arizona State doesn't want to lose Will Sutton that that does not look good there he is right here let's take a look what happens they're cutting back on him look like he just got whipped there he gets stepped on there uh, by by the offensive lineman who is uh, blocking another Sun Devil, hard to tell, or if it was just the, the left knee there. 
And he got hit on the cut block attempt. He was shaken up in the first half as well, but came back into the game. Boy, they lose him, and it changes everything for this defense. He is he's the stalwart in there. He allows them to do so many different things and pressures because the defensive coordinators know that he's going to take up the backside of a potential blitz and eliminate and erase some of those gaps. So without Will Sutton, it's going to be very interesting to see how this Arizona State defense continues to stop the run. So Marcus Hardison, a junior, will replace Sutton third down and three. Wisconsin looking to keep the chains moving here. Stavi to throw. And his pass is batted down to the line of scrimmage, incomplete. It was Jackson Hood and Carl Bradford both in the area. It looked like Hood got a hand on it. Well, Bradford was working on the right tackle, Rob Havenstein, and he just comes right up the edge, and he actually beats the block of the running back and gets to the quarterback, and then you get your arms up. And here's Bradford. You cannot expect to block him with James White. You just cannot do that. That is not a protection plan. That should be in this game for Wisconsin because that's going to be a no-win situation. Meyer booting it away. And Nelson sitting on for the fair catch, and he's got it at the 38-yard line. Arizona State offense on the field when we come back to Tempe. ESPN College Football Finale. Brought to you by the Volkswagen Passat. That's the power of German engineering. And America's Navy, a global force for good. Back here at Sun Devil Stadium, 21-13 Badgers over the Sun Devils. Quick injury report for you. Will Sutton, the defensive tackle for Arizona State. Just a thigh bruise. He will return on the next defensive series. And wide receiver Rick Smith, who had several drops in the first half, has an injured wrist. His return is questionable. So, Luke, it looked like uh, on that hit, he took a helmet to the thigh there. And hopefully for Arizona State's sake, Sutton will be back in on defense. Arizona State's offense on the field. Meanwhile, Joel Stabby, the Wisconsin quarterback, he hasn't thrown a completion since the early part of the second quarter on a touchdown. Here's a late pitch by Kelly. Bryce is cut down. Joe Schobert able to track him down on the sideline. And a negative play on first down, loss of three. Well, this Wisconsin defense is showing no signs of fatigue, despite the fact that they're out there now for their 58th play in this game. And they're continuing to run sideline to sideline, and they've answered the questions about whether they're fast enough to keep up with this Arizona State offense. Kelly rolling out. Oh, he could have run. Instead, he throws, and it's knocked away. Gene breaking up the pass from Jalen Strong, but it looked like there was a lot of green in front of the quarterback, Kelly. Yeah, they're in man-to-man -man coverage, but this is what you have Peniel Gene back there for. Great position. I've been impressed with the man-to-man -man skills of Wisconsin's secondary. They have been in a lot of good positions. One time they got the pass interference call, but other than that, uh, this Wisconsin secondary has played man-to-man -man admirably. Gene missed uh, half of the year a year ago with a broken foot. He's a junior from Palm Beach, Florida. Here's Kelly on third and 13 in trouble. Flushed out and chased out and hit late by Desmond Southward. Just not a smart play. It'll be a first down for Arizona State. If you got to hold up when the guy gives himself up like that, which Kelly was clearly doing. He's running out of bounds. If there's any question. Late hit out of bounds on the defense number 12. 15 yard penalty, first down. And Southward's the leader, the senior in that secondary. He knows better. And and it's, uh, yes, it is hard to pull off, but especially in that situation, you got to stop on third down. You're off the field. Just pull up. He's going out of bounds. So now Arizona State in Wisconsin territory at the 47-yard line with a fresh set of down. And another chance for Kelly, who uh, the last couple of possessions has struggled throwing the football. He's now 16 of 30 passing with an interception. Kelly gonna air it out and the pass is overthrown incomplete intended for Jalen Strong and Peniel Jean in coverage again 
Another example of man-to-man -man coverage from Wisconsin, and Gene's in good position. Looks back for the football. That's a sign of confidence as a corner. You're in great shape. Now get your now he gets that left arm hooked around there, but the officials see where he is. He didn't see it. Yep. Otherwise, he might have been able to lay out for that. And get two hands on. He's dead second and ten. It's a delayed handoff to Grice. He gets tagged at the 43-yard line and then wrestled down by Ethan Armstrong. So another third down for Arizona State. Well, and third down has been the down where Chris Borland has been moving around. He's gotten pressure on the quarterback consistently in this game. He's been up at the linebacker spot on the edge. Looks like he's going to come to the edge right here. Here he is. He's a matchup nightmare in pass rush. Just one down lineman here on third down and six. And some movement. Evan Finkenberg, the left tackle. After a while, you start thinking, right? When you, even though Borland's on the other side. That's number 62. Five yard penalty, third down. I mean, Borland's on the other side, but he keeps kicking the ground <laughs> like a bull ready to take off. And well, here he is. You're saying he's affecting him way over here? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> but look at him. He keeps kicking his foot. And he's going to take off. The raging bull out there. So third down and 11. Kelly to the sideline, another drop. Jalen Strong had to go through his hand. Had to help your quarterback out. Wow. You're right, that's the fifth drop in this game. That ball's thrown perfectly. And Jalen Strong, yeah, it's gonna be tight coverage. Gene's there again. Can't let him distract you, you just gotta make that play. And right now, I don't, I don't like the body language of the receivers for Arizona State. You got your quarterback back here under pressure, getting sacked, getting hit by Borland. Make a play for your quarterback. So, Lazard upon here on 4th and 11. Got to pin the Badgers deep. Doe is under it. And fair caught at the 11-yard line. Badgers ball. Still 9.49 left on the third. Eight-point lead for Wisconsin. Lunch at State makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $3 million in scholarship monies. So the kicking game uh, starting to work towards Arizona State's favor. They had a muff punt by Wisconsin, recovered by the Sun Devils last time, and then a good punt by Bazaar. This time, the Badgers at their 11. No Will Sutton for the Arizona State defense. Stavi has not completed a pass since early second quarter. He's going to hand it off here to White. And good run by White out near the 18-yard line. And uh, Tom Luganbo telling us they're going to hold Will Sutton out for at least one more series. The All-American well, defensive lineman for ASU. Once you get that, that five bruise, that's not going to get better. I mean, that's just going to be there. He just has to get comfortable with it and continue to move around and try to loosen it up. But... It's not like it's going to go away because that swelling now is in that in that thigh. And it's painful, but you can still play with it. Corey Clement, true freshman, who's rushed for 250 yards in two games, has the third tailback. Boy, he looks the part. He's back there on second and three, and they give it to him. And he gets driven to the ground, tried to spin out of the tackle, and did get a couple of yards. Stephon Martin was in his face. And so it'll be third down. Big third down here for Arizona State's defense. Third and short, too. This would be an ideal scenario for play action. You mentioned it. Stavi hasn't completed a pass since their touchdown drive, and everybody on Arizona State's defense is selling out to stop the run. Ideal scenario for perimeter run or play action. We also got those uh, offensive linemen up front. A lot of beef up there. They've had seven linemen drafted the last three years, more than any other school in the country during that span. They'll try to pound it here, and Gordon's got the first down. To the 26-yard line, they needed one. They got six. Arizona State has nine, ten guys in the box there, and you can't block all of them. There's going to be two free safeties there, and those are the guys that make the tackle, but this offensive line comes off and gets a little crease. Melvin Gordon does the rest. That was Davon Coleman who tried to strip the ball there unsuccessfully. So a fresh set of downs for Wisconsin. From the 26-yard line. 
Stavi to throw, going to get hit by Irabor, and the pass is hot. Intended for Abraderis, who's been really quiet in this game. Stavi now 5 of 13, only 30 passing yards. How many times have we called Irabor's number? Here he comes inside this time as a corner cat. We've seen it a number of times, and that's a poor job of blocking of Melvin Gordon. That's why James White plays a little bit more than Melvin Gordon, because of the pass protection. Stavi's not anticipating that hit. Almost picked off. Just two catches, meanwhile, for Aberderis. And second and ten. And it's White that's taken down. They fake that end around to Gordon. And White brought down by Carl Bradford. Chris Young there as well. And now it's third down and long. And here comes Will Sutton back into the game. When he was out, Wisconsin ran the ball four times on the inside, trying to take advantage of that. And now in a third down and 11 situation, they want him obviously back in there for the pass rush. Isn't it amazing? We saw him in the bowl game. Look at his body now compared to that. He's getting 30 pounds. That's, that's hard to do at six feet tall. That's not always a good thing. <laughs> well, he needed to. He was maybe a third or fourth round pick if he didn't gain weight. Stavi in trouble. Gets rid of the pass. Abradaris is there. It's a first down for Wisconsin. Well done by the quarterback. It's not easy to go two and a half, two quarters, quarter and a half without completing a pass, and then to step up in the pocket and throw that ball under pressure on a dime to Abradaris. But give Stave credit. He's not afforded the luxury of getting into a rhythm in this offense because they run the ball so much. He's got to be on point when he does get that opportunity to throw it, and he was. They hit the jackpot, obviously, with Russell Wilson two years ago when he transferred from NC State. We asked the coaches, hey, is Joe Stavi proven yet that you know, he can be a long-term guy? And uh, Gary Anderson said, not yet. They, they like what they've seen so far, but obviously they need to see more. Gordon cutting it back into Arizona State territory. Down to the 47 for six yards. Coleman tracks him down. And we've seen a lot of similarities with Gary Anderson with this offense, but one of the things that's different is this perimeter run. And it's not just a philosophical thing with Gary Anderson. The fact that he has Melvin Gordon allows him to do that with his speed. It's a really nice complement to the hard downhill running inside the tackles of James White. So second down and four. They'll go with two backs here. That's Pedersen, the outstanding tight end who has a touchdown catch. He motions out of the backfield. And Stavi with a deep set. And he's got a man wide open, but he threw it behind Pedersen. That might have been a touchdown if he put that on the money. It's third down. Wow, you're going to see Pedersen's just going to come out, and they're going to lose him in the formation. And this is one that Joe Stavi is going to lose sleep about tonight, because you're right, there was nobody left. And you got to make a decision as a quarterback, and that is, do you throw a dart and put it on him, or do you put a little air on it, and he decided to throw the dart and just threw it right behind him. So third and four at the Arizona State 47. Stavi going to white, and he's brought down short of the marker. It's fourth down. What do you do here if you're Gary Anderson? Do you try to pound it, get two yards? They're going to kick. Boy, it, it, I would say yes if they were consistently blowing Arizona State off the line, but they're not. They're having some trouble running the ball in between the tackles and have been relying on perimeter. So in that instance, no, you punt the ball here with an eight-point lead and hopefully get him inside the 10-yard line. Drew Meyer will boot it to Robert Nelson. Excellent punt. And Arizona State will start inside its 10-yard line. One of sports' greatest rivalries continues. Sunday night, pivotal matchup, Yankees-Red Sox with the Yankees two and a half games behind Tampa Bay for the second wild card spot. You got Cleveland a game and a half out, Baltimore-Kansas City hanging around. Yankees-Red Sox Sunday at 8 on ESPN. And back on the field, Taylor Kelly. You know, Michael Eubank is a guy that usually gets a bunch of snaps at quarterback. We have yet to see him. He's a change of pace guy. It's been all Taylor Kelly so far at quarterback. And Kelly pulls it back and fires. And there's a flag as Garage got knocked down by Shelton. 
Really first big game for true freshman Sojourn Shelton and he's been penalized several times. Well and he's learning is a baptism by fire. That's an offense on the defense. Penalty places the ball at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. But but I but I love the way that Shelton's playing the position. They've asked him to play man-to-man -man coverage. Now he's he's very handsy. You can see he's a physical <laughs> corner. He just has to learn how to keep his hands. He's in great use your feet, not your hands, to play man-to-man -man coverage if you're a corner. He's already mastered. I didn't do anything. <laughs> As he's uh, motioned to the officials, Grice into the pile. And he gets driven back at the 23-yard line to gain a three. You know, guys, with Sojourn Shelton, one of the things that limited his recruitment to some degree is the lack of ideal height. The number one most important trait he has right now as a young player is confidence. And when you've got confidence at corner, the defense can play cat coverage. And that's you got that cat and you got that cat. That's what they're doing with Sojourn Shelton. And we've seen at times Darius Hillary in there for him. And Hillary is out there now. Kelly had trouble with it on first down. And he gets rid of it. And Grace makes a man miss. And out to the 27 yard line so about four yards on a play that looked like it was going nowhere fast but another third down here for Arizona State boy and it just has not been crisp on offense for Arizona State drop passes dropped uh, snaps that was going to be a screen it looked like it could have had a chance but it gets off kilter and off schedule when you drop the snap and you bring up a, a big third and two here they're one for their last five on third down they need to get to the 30 yard line here Kelly and Grice makes a play for his quarterback. Pulls it in at the 36 yard line with Armstrong covering. We've seen drops by Kelly's receivers, but Grice made a nice play. And again, it's that matchup Grice on Brendan Kelly. Kelly decides to rush, then gets to try to get in no man's land to get back in coverage, and he's beat. 25. Kelly stepping up and a short throw that's caught by Gamage. And immediately tackled by Armstrong. They see the, the red card yep. by the Wisconsin coaches. What does that tell you? And that's a substitution alert to the defense. We're trying to tell their front seven the next time the ball is on the hash close to Wisconsin sideline, we want to substitute all front seven guys. They're trying to alert them so that they can get those fresh deep linemen and linebackers in, even though this is a fast-paced offense. Here comes a blitz off the edge. And they throw it that way, and it's caught. And Jalen Strong looks like he's got the first down based on forward progress. He was driven back by Caputo. It is a first down for the Sun Devil. And, and what Dave Arana, the defensive coordinator for Wisconsin, was telling us is, is Arizona State will actually try to keep the ball on the far hash so that you can't substitute. So there's a little bit of gamesmanship going on here with Arizona State trying to keep this front seven for Wisconsin on the field. They fake that little shovel pass. Actually, no, it was a, a, a pitch. And Foster to the outside. Gets positive yardage. We saw that play run in the first half. Caputo and Kelly trek down DJ Foster. And they got a lot of different weapons. We've seen Strong make a play. You've also got Demario De Nelson. He's been out there. We haven't seen him make a catch yet. He was a junior college Wildcat quarterback that Todd Graham and company are excited about. We'll see if he makes a play before the day is done. Here's Kelly with time and wide open is Ozier down the sideline. Inside the 15. Somebody forgot about number 82 on the near sideline. Yeah, miscommunication. You got one guy playing man to man and then one guy playing zone. That's Southworth that comes down playing zone coverage and that miscommunication leads to a big game. Here's DeAndre Lewis inside the 10 and near the five yard line. He had 122 yards against Wisconsin three years ago on a one point loss for the Sun Devils. He's kind of the number three guy now at tailback. Give it to him again. And he's to the one yard line. It'll be first and goal for Arizona State. Wisconsin getting worn out here on this drive. This is now over 70 plays that this Wisconsin defense has been on the field. And there's an injured Badger. It's Michael Caputo is shaken up. The fans don't like it. They think that he's faking it based on how Wisconsin's been getting blown off the ball in the last few plays.
was shaken up earlier in the game. Well, we see this now at the collegiate level. We're seeing it now at the professional level, trying to stop the pace of these offenses. And there's no way to know whether a guy's hurt or not. So let's bring in Tom from down on the field. You know, so much, so much of the spread offense, guys, is about dictating terms. You want to dictate pace. You want to dictate down and distance. And when you can't do that, you get frustrated. And that frustration then leads you to have to slow down whether you want to or not. And now when you go slow, you're out of the rhythm and the comfort level of your offense. This is the first time this half we've actually seen Arizona State start dictating terms and getting back to doing what they do best, and that's controlling the tempo of the game. And finally had receivers make catches, too, with Ozier bringing it in, and Grace keeping the drive alive with a nice catch. And there's Michael Eubank. We talked about it, but he usually gets snaps each game. He's in there now on first down and goal. He's a big kid. Six feet, six inches. And on the quarterback sneak, he pushes the pile. They haven't signaled yet. I don't think he made it. I mean, Arizona State never takes a snap from under center. And as soon as he got under center, all of the, the Wisconsin defenders, Borland in particular, got right over the center, anticipating the sneak. And even if you did get in, you, you couldn't tell. You couldn't see the ball. It's second down and goal. No way to review that. Wisconsin trying to hustle players in yeah. substitution. Arizona State substitutes, so they have to have a chance. Here's Eubank and Gweiss trying to get outside. He ducks. Touchdown, Arizona State. Second score of the night for Marion Grice. At 19 total touchdowns a year ago, and we'll see if Arizona State goes for the tie here or if they elect to kick the extra point. They can do either here the way they have it set up. They've got Burke Avicii, the backup quarterback, in, and Foster as well. They're going for it here, and now penalty flags fly. I think Wisconsin has 14 guys on the field. <laughs> Arizona State was going for two there, the way they had it set up with uh, the backup quarterback, Berkovici, in. Time out. Wisconsin. Number one. So they burn a timeout. They had at least the 12, at least 12 on the field. Prior to the flags being thrown for 12 people on the field. Well, that's big because if that was a penalty of too many guys on the field, it would have been half the distance to the goal and a much easier conversion yes. to tie the football game. Yep. So uh, a good timeout from Gary Anderson. Take a look at the touchdown off the left side for Marion Grice for the second time tonight. Yeah, great blocking on the edge and Borland comes through, tries to sweep a leg, and you're not going to catch Marion Grice when he, give, when he gets the edge. And when you put Eubank in there, everybody anticipates power inside, and then you hand it to Grice on the outside, it's an easy touchdown. No, not Taylor. Kelly is back on the field, as they will go for two to try and tie the game. The last time they met, three years ago, it was a one-point game. Wisconsin won it 20 to 19 on a failed extra point by the Sun Devils. Keep an eye on a matchup with Chris Coral right up here in the slot. They're doubling him now, Wisconsin is. Kelly in trouble. Hit from behind and dropped by Pat Muldoon. So it remains 21-19 Wisconsin. Final minute of the third quarter here in Tempe. On the Western. So Wisconsin maintains its lead by sacking the quarterback and keeping Arizona State from converting on that two point play. Pat Muldoon tracking down Taylor Kelly. So it remains 21 19. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville. Here at Arizona State, Sun Devils trying to get a signature win for Todd Grant. Badgers trying to do the same for 
Their first year head coach, Gary Anderson. Let's go back and look at that two point. Here's Muldoon here. They're only going to rush three. You see, it's great effort from Muldoon. And you have, when you only rush three, you have eight in coverage. And there's nowhere to go with the football. Freeze it right here. You see, he wants to throw the ball here. He wants to throw the ball there. But there's nowhere to go with that ball. And then Muldoon, with great effort, gets to the quarterback. Mark that play, obviously, yeah. as a failed two-point conversion to tie this game. Well, now, you know that Wisconsin can run the ball, but if you're in a position where Stavi has to beat you, uh, that's what you want if you're Arizona State. Can it be done? He struggled. He's only 7 of 16 passing on the night. They'll keep it on the ground here with Gordon. He breaks a tackle. Another one! And Gordon taking off again! How about this kid? Sophomore from Kenosha, Wisconsin. With a huge play there. About 35 yards. Well, he gets in the hole, and then on the second level right there is a great move, and he just left Irabor in the dust. He's got 179 rushing yards after that 35-yard scamper. First down at the 40-yard line of Arizona State. Here's play action. Stavi setting up, looking deep, airing it out. And Braderis diving to make the play at the 21-yard line. A 19-yard pickup. Well, we knew that the play action was going to be there anytime they wanted it. This was a great job. You're going to see uh, the receiver come down, Aberderis, and then come back to the football. It wasn't how they probably practiced it all week. What a great adjustment from Aberderis and fighting back to the football and giving Stavi a place to throw that ball. That's just experience. Helping out his quarterback. That's the end of the third quarter. Badgers on the cusp of the red zone as we start the fourth with a two-point lead over ASU. Hey, Pash, Brian, Greasy, Tom Luganville back in Tempe. Get your NFL Sunday started on ESPN at 10 a.m. It's Sunday NFL Countdown with Chris Berman and company. And before you set your lineups, catch Fantasy Football now at 11 a.m. on ESPN2. Melvin Gordon lighting it up here at Sun Devil Stadium. Averaging 18 yards a carry tonight. They'll give it to him here on first down. They finally hit him hard at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard on the play. Arizona State continues to dedicate nine and sometimes ten guys in the formation to stop the running game, and they're challenging Joe Stavi. As you said, will Stavi make the throw with Albert Harris? to win the game, and, and that's that's Arizona State's game plan, and I don't blame them. They had one connection already in this drive. Can they use play action again? Second and nine. Stavi is white in the backfield, and he'll throw, and it's a screen to White, gets a block, and then White runs into his center, Dallas Lou Allen, who uh, thankfully hops to his feet. That, that looked ugly, but he appears to be okay. So it's third down and four coming up for Wisconsin. When the two teams met in Madison a few years ago, a blocked extra point was the difference. Wisconsin won. And so far in this game, a failed two-point conversion by ASU the difference. And the Sun Devils hoping here to hold Wisconsin to a field goal trot. Big third down here. Surprised if they won the football, even though it's third and four. You got Strauss in a fullback in front of White. It's play action. And Stavi fires. Broken up. Intended for Pedersen. Alden Darby had coverage, and it's fourth down. Well, I think Arizona State knew this was coming. This play action, corner flat combination, and they're trying to get the ball to Pedersen. And give credit to Alden Darby, the senior. Made so many plays for this Arizona State defense and forces a field goal attempt. There was contact, but right as the ball arrived, and Wisconsin has had some troubles in the field goal kicking game. Kyle French missed six of 16 last year, one of two this year. A new field goal of 21 yards. This is a 34-yard attempt. The play clock winding down. 
And the kick is good, and the lead is five for Wisconsin. Early fourth quarter here in Arizona. Division rivals square off on Monday night football. One of these teams will be 0-2 as the Steelers and Bengals clash. Monday night countdown kicks things off at 6.30. Then it's Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, 825 on ESPN. Wisconsin leading Arizona State after a field goal by Kyle French, 24-19. Darby and Grice are deep as French will gear up for the kickoff on the 35. The last of four games pitting Big Ten against back uh, Pac-12 opponents. Pac-12 won two. The Big Ten with one win so far today. And here's Grice. And he's up to the 23-yard line as we bring Tom Luganville in from the field. You know, the second quarter matchup that ASU found to be so successful was getting number eight DJ Foster, number one Marion Grice, in the slot as the number three receiver over the linebackers and strong safeties for Wisconsin. They have not done that since the second quarter. Secondly, number 97 Brandon Kelly has the unenviable task of having to match up in space versus Marion Grice. He's got to be keyed in when Grice is offset to his side. He's going to get the wheel route down the sideline. Let's see how they handle this possession here. First down. Now, Grice a little banged up, so DeAndre Lewis is in, and it's a pass play for Kelly. And his pass is dropped. Another drop. This one by Chris Coyle, normally sure handed, so it's second down and 10. Well, Wisconsin defensively has stayed in their nickel most of the game, and so they have one liability, as, as Tom pointed out, and that's Brendan Kelly. And they're not they're to try not to get him matched up with Grice and with Foster. And if I'm Arizona State, you're right. You got to get the ball in number eight's hand with slot. Here he is right here. And he's matched up on a nickel. That's an advantage for Arizona State. That's Nate Hammond, who's a backup freshman safety. And now they move up Borland out near him. As Kelly goes down the sideline, a back shoulder throw that's caught by Jalen Strong. A first down to the 43. Gain of 19 on the play. We see more quarterbacks and wide receivers in college working on this throw. This is done perfectly. Throw right at the back of the helmet, and you tell the wide receiver to wait until the last second to turn around. It's well done by Jalen Strong and Taylor Kelly. I think Strong can be a difference maker for the Sun Devils. He's made a couple plays here. They go to him again. He goes up high and makes the grab. A beautiful catch inside the Badger 35. Exact same call against man-to-man, -man, and that's Hillary, who's a backup corner. And a great adjustment from Jalen Strong. You can see why they're so excited about his playmaking ability in crowded spaces with corners on him. You got to have guys that can uh, take the top off the defense, as you like to say, in a conference like the Pac-12. As Kelly will throw it again here, going to go deep into the end zone, incomplete. Trying to hit strong, who is in double coverage? Brian, you referenced his big playability, Jalen Strong down the sideline, but I think it's his size and speed combination that was sorely lacking in this offense a year ago, particularly in contested matchups, one-on-one, -on -one, where your quarterback, Taylor Kelly, has got tremendous confidence. And guys, just another note, Jordan Shelton, the freshman corner, has not been in the last three plays. Now, Darius Hillary, we've seen him spell Shelton from time to time at corner. Kelly throwing again, and this pass is off target, incomplete. There was contact as Foster was hit by Caputo. Maybe it was uncatchable. The official was watching it the entire way. Well, there's no question that Caputo got there early, and that should have been a flag. There's no question he was there early. And so now, really, for Arizona State here in Fort Down territory, we'll see how they handle this play. Third and ten. Uh, so Jordan Shelton's back in the game at the top of the screen on Jalen Strong, so it's a good sign for Wisconsin. Man to man. Kelly gets rid of the pass, and it is caught. DJ Foster with the defender Caputo all over. A lot of back shoulder throws on this drive. Well, it's all man-to-man -man coverage from Wisconsin, and they're challenging Arizona State to make the plays. Taylor Kelly is throwing the ball on a dime, and his receivers are now starting to step up and make the plays they weren't making in the first half. 
They're inside the 15. Seventh play of the drive. ASU down five, 12 minute mark. Kelly, another straight drop back. Another back shoulder throw and a flag. Going for strong and Darius Hillary, the guilty man. That's four on this drive, the same play. And each one of them has worked. Why wouldn't you keep doing it? And you get into a corner's head, and then Darius Hillary just Passing pushes him out of bounds. On the defense number two, the ball is placed at the spot of the foul on the two-yard line. Now, he meant number five. There is no number two on defense. It was Hillary here. Yeah, I mean, he just he just runs him right out of bounds. And finally, he says, everybody's catching balls on me. I'm just going to run you out of bounds. And unfortunately for Wisconsin, they don't have anybody else that they can put in there in place of Hillary. So it'll be first time goal at the two-yard line. How many times we say, well, why don't they do it again? And, and teams don't seem to do it. <laughs> And here they are attacking the same way, but now they got their heavy package in. First down and goal. And it's a pass play. Kelly being chased and throws it away. Almost stepped out before he got rid of the pass. That's what the Wisconsin defenders are saying. And no, it's an incompletion. And so far in this game, Arizona State has struggled to get the ball in the end zone when they've been down here. They've not been very good, and a big reason why is because they haven't had that consistent rushing attack that Todd Graham loves to have. They get down here and they got to throw the football. It's very difficult. And I got Eubank in as they pull Kelly to the sideline. He's had a great drive so far. And we'll see if Eubank can finish it here on second and goal. It's Bryce looking for his third score. He's in. Touchdown, Arizona State. For the first time since the opening quarter, the Sun Devils are on top. They will go for two here. They failed the last time. Look to extend the lead to three. I don't know if they want to go for two, but they seem to be confused. And they had their kicking team on the field, and now they're trying to get their offense situated. And you got to go for two, right? Still a lot of time on the clock with 20 seconds on the play clock. But this is this is the right decision. Yes, yes absolutely. Just looked like they had their kicking team out on the field. Kelly back out there. Grace next to him. They roll him out, and Kelly. Throws it out of bounds. He had Jalen Strong open. In that situation, why not just throw it up for grabs? You got a 6'4 receiver. I don't think he saw him. I don't think he saw him. He had him in the back, but he didn't see him. But they get the touchdown, and they answer to Wisconsin. And a physical run right here by Grice. Not a big hole, but gets just over the goal line. College football finale brought to you by the only 2014 Mitsubishi Outlander and Firestone, reminding you that whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Some impressive throws by Taylor Kelly on that last drive, particularly those back shoulder throws, and the last two possessions for Arizona State may have dominated Wisconsin's defense. They regain the lead, 25-24. Plenty of time left here in the fourth quarter. Kenzel Doe is the deep man. And this is a returnable kickoff. Doe across the 20 and brought down at the 23-yard line. Well, Arizona State was hoping that the pace and the heat would pay dividends in the fourth quarter, and you see the last two drives, long touchdown drives, 11 plays, 8 plays, a lot of yardage, and now 81 plays they have run against this Wisconsin defense, and you got to wonder if it's starting to take its effect in the heat. Wisconsin decided to come out Thursday, you had Ohio State going to Cal. They flew out yesterday. Wisconsin comes out a day early to adapt to the heat. They did a walkthrough out in the heat at a high school on Thursday. Walkthrough yesterday as well. 
Now they trail by one. They've got the ball short of their 25-yard line. And here's Gordon. Look at him go. Oh, man. Oh, and then he just runs over a corner. <laughs> we got to keep an eye on this guy for the rest of the regular season. My goodness. He is something special. And, and, and this Arizona State had it defended perfectly. You say they come up, and they have containment. He just runs right over him. And he's a physical back. Six foot two, 220 pounds, and he can run. Robert Nelson, 169 pounds, had no shot. And then Gordon just punished Alden Darby. Here's White. And he's trying to get outside. Cut down at the 30-yard line for a one-yard loss. So they get eight on first down. They lose a yard on second down. And now it's third and three. Nelson made the play that time for ASU. I'm getting the ball in Melvin Gordon's hands any way that I can. A rule out of screen. It's like a running play. But you get him on the edge and... Uh, this pass rush for Arizona State is fierce. But Stavi in the gun here with Gordon and White. Stavi to throw. And it's not down at the line of scrimmage. That's the second time today, and it's Jackson Hood who got it again. Stavi 6'5. I don't know if those passes are low. I mean, Jackson Hood six feet tall. He's knocked down two passes. I just think this was a poor throw. He's just trying to dump the ball to James White. And he, he threw the ball low. He oh. threw the ball right in Jackson Hood's face mask. And you, if you're going to throw that ball over the middle, over those defensive linemen, you've got to get high as a quarterback with as high a release as you possibly can. And Joe Stavi is six foot five. He's right. pretty tall enough. Five inches taller than the guy who knocked it down. Nelson, the deep man here as Wisconsin kicks it away. Makes the first man miss. Nelson finally brought down by Chris Borland. Special teams ace and standout linebacker for the Badgers. In the first half, Wisconsin had only 71 rushing yards. Got 80 on the first play of the third quarter. A touchdown run by Gordon. They're at 221 right now, but they trail. As Arizona State's Taylor Kelly has really gotten into a rhythm. Sun Devils with a one-point lead. They've had a pair of failed two-point conversions, but they're still on top, and they have the ball at their 40-yard line with 10-15 remaining. Kelly will hand it off here on first and 10. Grice able to turn the corner. He's pushed out after a gain of close to eight yards by Ethan Armstrong. Grice with three rushing touchdowns in this game for ASU. On um, that time, last drive, Arizona State threw the ball at will and man-to-man -man coverage. So this, this drive, Wisconsin is going to play zone, but they're only leaving three and four guys in the box. So it's begging Arizona State to rush the football. The 83rd play of the game for Arizona State's offense right here. Second and two. And Kelly to throw as a man in his face and has to throw it away. It was Bo Allen who had a touchdown on a botched snap on a punt that had pressure on Kelly. Um, give Bo Allen credit. He came right up the middle, almost unblocked. And they're asking him to do a lot in this defense. Be the nose guard and two gap and then rush the quarterback. And he's been up to the challenge. It's not easy. To play 83 snaps now in the desert yeah. <laughs> at 320 pounds. Got to do it again here to get the football back. Arizona State with uh, Stanford on the road next. Then USC at home, then Notre Dame in Arlington, Texas. Try to get a win here, which would be the biggest for Todd Graham in his second year at ASU. And that pass pulled in by Ozier for a first down. Taylor Kelly dealing here in the second half. Mike Norville, his offensive coordinator, loves to move him, says he's very accurate on the move. And when you start to get pressure, you get outside the pocket, the reads become a lot easier and an accurate throw. And here's Grice inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. Eight of five or six on the play. 
So you get the feeling now that this this is the game here for Wisconsin. They have got to get a stop because their offense has been anemic in the second half. They've got Purdue at home next week and a date with the Buckeyes in Columbus after that as Kelly goes down the side. Left. Paul Strong up high, pulls it in. Jalen Strong has really come alive here in the second half. The third back shoulder throw this time on Gene. And they just know the matchup out there is in their favor. They're going to continue to go to that well. See if they do it again here on first down inside the 15-yard line. The ball at the Badger 12. Here's Bryce. Makes a man miss. His fourth touchdown. Some help from his quarterback, too, with a block by Kelly. This offense is so predicated on tempo and rhythm and confidence that comes from that. And in the second half, we've seen the accumulation of snaps and the speed and the playmakers start to show up. Arizona State on offense and they're in a good rhythm and think about it their defense is only allowed 17 points the other touchdown came on special teams as the Sun Devils have an eight-point lead Wisconsin needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion as Marion Grice with his fourth rushing touchdown and the Sun Devils on top and in control Wow. Todd Graham trying to get his biggest win in his second year at Arizona State, how to knock off the Wisconsin Badgers and Joel Stavi, who has struggled in this game. Just nine completions, 77 yards. He does have a touchdown pass. You can imagine Arizona State will try to make him beat them rather than their outstanding running backs. It'll come out to the 25 here for Wisconsin. Stavi, a true sophomore, started six games last year, then broke his clavicle against Michigan State, missed four games, was cleared for the Rose Bowl, and uh, last week, or the first two weeks, I should say, had five touchdowns, but had two interceptions against inferior competition. Well, we didn't know a lot about either one of these teams coming into this game, and Gary Anderson is going to find out as a new head coach of Wisconsin. He's going to find out a lot about this young quarterback right now, right here on the road in this drive. They got seven on the box on defense here. And the two deep safeties. And the one James White trying to get through a hole, and he picks up about five to the 30-yard line, brought down by Martin and Coleman, Tom. You know, it can be so difficult when you know what you are as an offense. You know what your identity is, and everybody else knows it, too. And you get put out of your comfort zone, and you have to play from behind. You also know exactly what you aren't, and I think that can affect your overall psyche and confidence when you get in these situations, particularly on the road. Let's see how the young quarterback handles it. We'll see if they just continue to feed the running backs as well. Take time off the clock. They've been pretty balanced run pass as Gordon is the tailback. And they drag Gordon down this time at the line of scrimmage. Bradford and Young. There are two Sun Devils shaking up. Bradford and Jackson Hood are both injured on the play for Arizona State. We saw Will Sutton leave and then return, and now you've got two other guys, Carl Bradford and Jackson Hood, who were down. Boy, two of the staples on this Arizona State defense, both holding their legs. The injury to Hood seemed to be away from the play. It was uh, Bradford suffered the injury on the tackle attempt of Big Melvin Gordon. Here's 92, and I think this is 52. And I think, you know, it's been a hot, he gets split there. Jackson, Ooh. oh my goodness, right there, he gets split. That, hopefully he's all right. And Bradford on the tackle attempt, shake it up. So they're out for one play here, and it's a big play of the game. Big play. And this is where you need your quarterback. You run the ball on first and second down, and you're going to bring up third down situations where you need your quarterback to make a play. Other 
holding really two run plays. They've, they've held up pretty well on defense. Stavi throws incomplete. There was contact in the secondary, but the pass was off target. Intended for a doe, and it's fourth down. The Badgers have to punt. And I, I, that, that approach, I just, I just don't think that that kind of approach, running the ball first and second down, and puts your quarterback in a difficult situation. He's not very confident right now. That, the ball had no chance no. of being caught. You have a much better chance with play action potentially on a second down play, flipping the ball to Pedersen in the flat or something like that to get on schedule and get him some confidence before he has to go on third down. Oh, they fake it here on fourth down. And it's Borland that's going to throw it, and it's caught by Pedersen. First down, Wisconsin in Arizona State Territory. Fake punts were a staple when Brett Bielema was the head coach of Wisconsin. And here Gary Anderson in his first big game dials it up beautifully. Well, give him credit. Here's Borland right here, and he is going to come around this way. Well-designed play. He just flips it to him, and I thought Borland was going to run the ball. It looked like he had the room, but then he pulls it down. <laughs> and can Chris Borland do anything more for Wisconsin in this football game? And a first down in Arizona State Territory. Both Bradford and Hood are back in for the Sun Devils. They go without a tailback here, so Stavi to throw on first down. Has time, and going deep, Abradaris inside the 20. First down, Badgers in the red zone. Great route again. Abradaris is just so friendly to the quarterback. He does all the things right to make it an easy throw. That time, a double move on the outside, and he crosses face of the free safety rather than going behind him and gives a friendly lane for his quarterback. First down at the 16-yard line of Arizona State after that 31-yard pass play. Abradaris, the motion man here. White is the tailback. It's White trying to find a hole. They stand him up. Chris Young grabbing him from behind after a gain of about three. That'll take us down to about six minutes. Wisconsin needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie. Attempt carry for White in this game. He and Melvin Gordon have split the carry so far. We got three tight ends here, all lined up at the bottom of your screen. Now Pedersen motions. Play action and a rollout for Stavi. And he went for the short throw and threw it behind Sam Arnes. And there was the, the play action that you were calling for on second down. Uh, unfortunately for the Badgers, he just couldn't complete it. Third yeah, down. It was poor execution. Take a look at the route distribution. Uh, they're going to have a corner route and a flat route. And Aberderis is going to come across. And there's nowhere to go with this football. The corner's covered, the flat's covered, and Aberderis is covered. And nice job by Stavia throwing the ball away. But it's very difficult to run a flood into the boundary like that. There's not a lot of space. You run this play with four down territory in mind or too early. Todd Graham's going to call a timeout. That'll leave Arizona State with two. We'll see if this play call on third down and six is run or throw when we come back. Pass on Greasy, Tom Lugan, Bill, and Tempe. Third down and six. We saw play action pass and second down. What do you, what do you expect well, here? On third down, Stavi has not looked comfortable. On the last two third downs, he's not thrown the ball well. And so I really like the screen game. They haven't run a whole lot of screens. Your best players are your backs. You have athletic offensive line that can get downfield, and you can bring the rush in. It's a safe throw. But they have trouble getting the proper personnel in the huddle there. Third down and six. Stavi to throw, pressure coming, Stavi in trouble, gets out of there and dumps it off to White, inside the five, down at the three, it's first and goal. It looked like he was going to get sacked by Chris Young and somehow Stavi got out of there and completed it to White. Well, absolutely, and, and it just, it ends up being like a screen, but I don't know how he got out of that. Jones had him dead to rights. But he found a way to make a play. And how many times do we see teams that win, teams that just find a way? And on this drive, fake punt, third down conversions, they found a way. First and goal from inside the three-yard line.
Here's White. Nowhere to go. Erebor, who has made a lot of plays today, comes in from his corner spot. It's a two-yard loss. We were at practice yesterday, and one of the things that we saw with Todd Graham and his defense, he felt like this game could come down to a goal line stand. And he said, we're going to have to make one play. And our philosophy on defense is to get 11 guys in the backfield. That time, you're aboard. He's got two more snaps here. We'll see if this Arizona State defense can keep him out. And at practice, Graham spent a good minute, minute and a half, making Absolutely. sure his players re recognize the importance. Here's Gordon. And he breaks the tackle and gets to the one-yard line. So it's third down and goal. Will Sutton makes his first tackle of the contest. Ball inside the one-yard line for third down. And, and, and here it is, exactly like Coach Graham laid it out. And Will Sutton, Jackson Hood, those guys on this play, they're going to be knifing in, trying to make this Wisconsin deep, this offense stumble in the backfield. Three tight ends. Gordon is the tailback. Third down and goal. It's Gordon. It's a touchdown. And the Badgers within two with 3.53 on the clock. Second touchdown of the game for Melvin Gordon. He had three all of last year. He's closing it on 200 yards for the game. And, and they ran right behind their best offensive lineman, their left guard, Ryan Groy. And he doubled the nose with the center, got up to the second level, and it was an easy walk-in. So the Badgers going for two. They take Gordon out of the game. It'll be White at running back. Wisconsin looking to tie it. Stavi in the gun. Stavi going to get hit from behind. No conversion. Arizona State maintains a two-point lead. That's the third failed conversion between these two teams in this game. How about the play of Carl Bradford fighting off injury to hit the quarterback, Stavi, and a failed conversion. There he is right here, and he's on the red shirt freshman, Tyler Merritts, and he just goes around. Once he gets that edge, he is very difficult to keep off the quarterback, and it seems like he's been fighting cramping yeah. in this second half. For his hamstring issues, a lot of times that's cramping, just like it can be in the lower leg. And Give Carl Bradford credit. Coach Graham told us he was one of the most improved and more mature players uh, from a year ago on this entire football team for Arizona State, and he has showed up here when it's been money time and made plays. Wisconsin has two timeouts remaining. Trailing by two as the Badgers kick it away to ASU. Bryce will run it out, and he'll get to the 20-yard line. Brought down at the 21. Check out Sunday Night Baseball tomorrow night. The Red Sox and Yankees at 8 on ESPN. Boston beat New York today 5-1. To we got a good one here in Tempe. Final game of the night on ESPN. And the last of four Pac-12 Big Ten contests today. Washington knocked off Illinois. UCLA beat Nebraska. Ohio State over Cal. Arizona State leading Wisconsin. Badgers again with two timeouts remaining. And Kelly going to throw, trying to set up a screen to Bryce. Bryce cutting it back, has room. And Bryce stops short of the first down. Boy, and he went out of bounds. You'd love to see him stay in bounds right there. Three and a half minutes left in this game. It's the little things, the little things, the little things. Stay in bounds, keep the clock running. Get the first down. So second down and a yard. And they're going to take time off the clock here before they snap it. And Grice gets the first down here. Chris Borland tripped him up. Guys, Mike Norvell, the offensive coordinator at Arizona State, standing right beside me here, and he's dictating tempo. He's not going to allow this ball to be snapped. He's got his eyes on the 25-second clock, the 40-second clock, excuse me, and he's just holding his hand up. You get him on the sideline right here, and they're just going to wait and wait and wait, doing a nice job 
Again, dictating terms. Sometimes those terms aren't, up, aren't upbeat. And if Wisconsin stops them here and they don't get a lot of yards on first down, do they start using those timeouts? Absolutely. The snap will come with about 2.40 on the clock. Play clock at 4. They got to hurry. It's at 1. They didn't get it off. I think Todd Graham got a timeout. He's furious that uh, Arizona timeout. State didn't snap Arizona the ball. State. Timeout. 30-second timeout. Cover car. 236 remaining. Arizona State with the ball, leading by two. And there's a flag down, so it's going to be first and 15. False start on the Sun Devil. False start, offense, number eight. Five yard penalty, still first down. It's on DJ Foster. Again, the Badgers with two timeouts. And that's a bad penalty because you you love to be able to run the ball to convert your first downs But when you're first and 15 now it becomes very difficult and now Wisconsin can use their two timeouts clock stopped because of the penalty and Todd Graham prides himself on not yeah. having these kinds of penalties 10th fewest in the country last year after being dead last before he arrived first and 15 And Kelly on the roll up throwing it deep it's caught for a first down at the 48-yard line by D.J. Foster. The difference in this game, when you boil it all down, has been Taylor Kelly and these wide receivers in the second half making more plays in the passing game than Wisconsin. And, and they have more confidence. And Taylor Kelly has continually pulled that trigger. And Arizona State has scored points because of it. 91st play coming. The snap will come with about two minutes on the clock. Wisconsin's got to bring some pressure here. And Bryce up to the 49-yard line for two Bryce yards. Nice. And here comes the first timeout by the Badgers. Tackle by Hammond and Borland. Borland and Nate Hammond team up on the tackle. So second down coming for Arizona State. If the Sun Devils can hang on, Brian in win. Yep. What does that say about them in terms of how they might fare in the Pac-12 when they beat a team like Wisconsin? Well, you know, what we saw today in the Pac-12, we saw UCLA race past Nebraska in the second half, 35 unanswered points. We saw Washington handle the middle of the road, Illinois. We saw Ohio State, the only Big Ten team that, that won. Uh, outside of this game is still in the balance, but I think what you've seen is, and we didn't even see the top two teams in the Pac-12, Oregon and Stanford. So clearly the Pac-12 is ahead of the Big Ten is what we found out at the end of this day. And for Arizona State, I don't know that that puts them anywhere closer to the top of the Pac-12 because they're not at the level of Oregon or Stanford in that, in my opinion. And UCLA looks pretty good. So they're right there in the middle uh, of the pack after those guys. Second and eight for Arizona State, and Kelly going to throw, and it's incomplete, so the clock will stop. They took a gamble there, and now Coyle has to come out. He lost his helmet. He's a big third down receiver. He's got to come out for third down and eight. And the Badgers don't have to burn their final timeout. Did you agree with that decision? Uh, no, no, I don't know why. You, 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 you took the risk and threw the ball uh, two plays before. Now run the clock or burn a timeout. But you don't need to throw the ball. He wasn't even going to get a first down anyway. So third down and eight. Now you have to throw it. So you might be able to save your time out for offense here if you're Wisconsin, depending on what happens here on third and eight. Well, you don't have to throw it. You can decide to run it and burn a timeout. Good. And Kelly on a quarterback run. And he is driven down at midfield. And Wisconsin will use the timeout. And they're going to have plenty of time. 144 on the clock. And you're talking about right now the Pac-12 appears to be ahead of the Big Ten. We don't know right now, other than Ohio State, who the elite teams are in the Big Ten. It, it seemed like Michigan, but then they had the scare at home today to Akron. Maybe that's just a letdown there at the great uh, just, victory in the final home game against Notre Dame last week. You just want to find a way to bring that up, didn't you? <laughs> I, mean, I had to get it in before yeah, the end of the see, show. I know it's late I, at night, yes. you know, but there are people that... You know, you don't have to bring that up right now. 
They're was undefeated. Close, man. It was, they're still undefeated. They had UConn on the road next week. And uh, but other than Ohio State and Michigan, we know Michigan's good. Yeah. Is Northwestern are, are they know. ready to take that next step? Where Where is Wisconsin? Last year they went to the Rose Bowl, but it wasn't a very good year. They're they're eight and six. They were they four were, and four in the Big Ten. And they were third in their division, right? Because yep. Ohio State was eight and zero. Penn State was six and two in that division, and and they were third, but went by default. And remember, Arizona State had a bad snap on a punt in the first half. And it ended up being a Wisconsin touchdown. And Easton Wallstrom will snap it here to Dom Vizar. We'll punt it away on fourth down. And Wisconsin's got two men back Jordan Frederick and Kenzel Doe. It's a good snap here. And, oh, dangerous play there by Doe running. With a head of steam, and then that ball ended up around his face mask. He put his hands up to make the fair catch around the 17-yard line. So 136 left, no timeouts remaining for the Badgers. They trail Arizona State by two, 32 to 30. Wisconsin led by eight at the start of the third quarter when Gordon took off on an 80-yard rushing score. Arizona State came storming back with a quarterback play. Taylor Kelly, Marion Bryce with four rushing touchdowns. We've had a total of three failed two-point conversions between these two teams. And now all the Badgers need is a field goal to win. Stavi to throw on first down. Steps up. There's a flag down. The pass is incomplete. Almost intercepted. Abraderis, the intended receiver. Martin was in coverage. Darby was in the area. It's going to be a Badger penalty anyway. On the offense, number 54, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. I think that's Kyle Costigan, the right guard, and I think he's trying to block Will Sutton, and <laughs> that's a tough deal when you know you're going to have to throw the football, and then you draw the best defense alignment in the Pac-12, and he just went down and grabbed the bottom of his leg. Keep in mind, Wisconsin has had some kicking issues as well. They've used two different field goal kickers this year, Kyle French and Jack Russell. You would think realistically that, that they need to get to about the 25-yard line. Arizona State's going to decline this penalty to make it second down and 10. I'm not sure I agree with that decision. Yeah. I'd like to put him in the, in the end zone. All the way from him. Make Stavi beat you. Stavi in the pocket. His arm hit. And he still completes it. A gain of about five yards to Frederick. Clock running. Minute 20 and counting. And it's third down. If you're Joel Stavi, you got to get this ball out of your hand. You can't sit back there, take seven step drops, and, and expect your offense line to hold up. Third and four. Stavi. And it's caught by Duckworth. He stays in bounds. They finally get him down inside the 30-yard line with a minute to go. Well, just as Taylor Kelly was making these back shoulder throws for Arizona State, then Joel Stavi comes back and makes it to Duckworth. Did he stay in bounds? Ooh, it's hard to tell if he stepped out on that sideline. Every play is reviewed. We'll see if they take more time to look at it. Arizona State does have a timeout, so we can take a timeout to challenge. It was a 51-yard pass play. Now the clock stopped coming from upstairs. Previous play is under further review. And the ruling in the field was that he was not out of bounds, and looked like that gave him an additional 15 to 20 yards. Let's see if we can tell from this angle the left foot. It's the, well, it's both feet. First, it's the left foot, and it's hard. Then it's the right foot and the heel. Oh, that, that <laughs> angle doesn't really tell you this, this whether angle, it's conclusive. Yeah, so first, it's the left foot. Is that in bounds? It, and that's hard to tell. And then if you let it go another frame, then you got to make a decision on the right heel right there. I think he's out there. That looks, well, it doesn't know if, you're, if the heel is touching the ground. And remember, the call on the field yeah. is that it was in bounds. I don't know if you consider that. No, it's not conclusive. There was a face mask that was missed as well. You saw the mask get tugged there. But uh, it doesn't look to be conclusive. 
It has to be indisputable, indisputable video evidence to overturn the ruling in the field. And it's big because, again, they've had struggles in the kicking game. And having the ball at the 40-yard line compared to you know, the 26 is a big deal. Still a lot of time on the clock. 101. All right, we talked about if Arizona State wins, what this could mean for them. What if Wisconsin wins? What does it, what does it say about the Badgers? Well, it, it says that a lot of stayed the same with this team that, that runs the football, plays good defense, and to come on the road here, they've played, they've made their mistakes. Both teams have. There's been turnovers, there's been kicking game errors. It hasn't been the most well-played game, but it's been, uh, it's been a good it's been a good game and that last play was finally Joel Stavi taking that shot and being confident and throwing the ball down the field in tight coverage. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It's a first down where the player went out of bounds. So again, it, 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 when they say that, they mean that there's not enough video evidence to overturn it. So watch here, Duckworth catches, and it looks like around midfield, it's hard to tell whether he goes in or out. And it ended up being about a 25-yard add-on after that from Duckworth on the run. And now over, there's a minute one left in this game, and they're already in field goal position, so you got to be smart with the football here. And Stavi's going to throw here, getting chased from behind. And Stavi's pass off target, and he had a wide-open Jared Abraderis inside the 10-yard line. Irabor was chasing the quarterback. And Stavi was off the mark with a pass. Uh, if you're going to throw the football, you've got to get out of the pocket because the worst thing you can do is take a sack here. The game is over in that case. And, and, so, and this is a good pass rushing defense in front. So I like getting outside the pocket. But right now, run, you can run the ball here if you feel comfortable and confident in Kyle French, your kicker. French last year was 10 of 16 on field goals. Second and 10, another pass play. And Pedersen on the catch at the 20. He's dumped immediately by Mokiola. So inside 45 seconds left. It's third down. They don't have a timeout. There's about an eight second difference between game and play clocks. And from here, about a 38 yard field goal. And they got to throw it here. They, they, they run the ball. That's right. They got to have their, their crew, their field goal crew's got to be ready to get on the field. 23 seconds left. And Stavi's throw is caught inside the 15-yard line, and Abraderis out of bounds at the 13. Executed perfectly by the Wisconsin offense. Now, now you can run another play if you want. There's 18 seconds left. It's dangerous, so do you, do you run a play or do you bring your field goal team here? Well, just go back to that last. You can't allow that to happen. Arizona State defensively. You can't not allow a hitch on the outside to get a first down and get out of bounds, you got to defend the sideline, and that was just way too easy. A lot of dangerous things can happen here. A turnover, or if you run the ball in the middle of the field, you try to spike it, somebody jumps, there's a 10-second runoff or a penalty. And we'll see if Stavi throws the football. Now he's just going to run in the middle of the field and put the ball down at the 15-yard line. Yeah. It was interesting. He just put the ball down. He didn't take a knee. He just put the ball on yeah. the ground. He's saying he gave himself up, so it's down. But there's four seconds left. The clock's running. The clock's still going. The official didn't respot the ball, and the game's over. The official took forever to put the ball down. Gary Anderson can't believe it, and the Sun Devils win the game. Why did it take forever for them to spot the ball? Wisconsin was going to get up there and spike it and bring their field goal team in. I think there was some confusion because Arizona State was saying Stavi wasn't down. He was saying, I gave myself up. I put the ball down, and the officials are heading wow. for the exits. You're absolutely right. That official was over the football telling the offense of Wisconsin to wait when he should have spotted the ball and allowed them to snap the ball, spike it, and get their field goal team on the field to kick that game-winning field goal. There's no question. Let's take a look. He's going to run. 
So again, Arizona State saying so, he just put the ball so in and get himself you have, up. You've got one guy down on here ball. waiting on the ball. That's that's a delay of game. Now the ball is set, and the official right. is telling them no, you can't go. Whereas they should have been able to snap that ball. That, that's a penalty on Anthony Jones, first of all, for delay of game on, on the defense. It's a penalty on the defense. Here's the time. And the game clock runs out before they snap the ball, but there's no question if we can run that back and see. So again, he, he went to the middle of the field, he took the ball, he put it down, he gave himself up. It looked like a delay of game on the defense. Then the official. An awful, awful way for this game to end. Chris Borland can't believe it. A lot of people in Madison feel his pain right now. Arizona State celebrating, though. 32-30, the Sun Devils win it.